Hello, everyone, and welcome to session two, episode two, I should probably say, of D&D Brief. And uh, I'm your, your host and dungeon master, Sam Dillon. And with me today are Matt. Yo, what up? And Nina. Hi. And Dave. Hey, everybody. And we are uh, uh, going to run session two of our of our live action play game tonight. I guess that's kind of the wrong way to describe it, but that's okay. So when we last left, our heroes were uh, reaching a lighthouse and the lighthouse worker, the lighthouse keeper came to the door and he saw a large white haired cat staring at him. <laughs> he, he let the large white haired cat inside and then uh, he he basically said, hey, I got to go back upstairs and finish my job. And then everyone else arrived um, a couple hours later. <laughs> so before we move on, what I would like to do is a very quick recap of what happened. And I would like the recap to uh, be presented by the players. Okay. Um... So we started in the, oh gosh, where did I write it down? The Entrast and Finn, the Swimming Sword. That's right. I got that. Not the Swinging that. Sword, the Swimming Sword. The Swimming Sword. If That's you thought right. a Swinging Sword was bad, just wait till it learns to swim. Um, <laughs> that is where we were hanging out uh, and we came across, or a little girl, uh, came in, burst open the door, tears running down her face, looking for help because her, her father was in the lighthouse and no one's heard from him, but there are giant uh, shadows she saw down in the, uh, on the beach. So hearing the call to adventure, uh, the human, the halfling and the tabaxi leapt into action and headed toward the beach. And then someone else- Not before traumatizing her further. Well, true. <laughs> <laughs> but, we, and but we have good news for her, right? After having exactly. found her alive. So. Exactly, exactly. So someone else take it from there. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, so leaving the, the shelter of the inn, heading out into the rain and the storm, we made our way down to the beach, um, expecting to find a, a grisly and sad sight based on what the little girl had told us. Uh, we came across some strange creatures, giant crabs that were seemed to be infected with some kind of disease they were they were slimy and smelly and disgusting ruining my character's hopes for for a, a giant feast afterwards of, of crab delight <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we engaged them uh i think for our first our first engagement in combat i think we did pretty good we i think we were unscathed right no one took any damage so uh, yeah i uh, think so we did a great job yeah so it went really well we dispatched the crabs um, found a grisly site that was some some carnage. Luckily, it wasn't the father of the girl we were thinking it was, but it seemed to be some some sailors that had washed up on shore or some bodies of sailors that the crabs were eating um, that had a strange uh, sigil on their uh, their clothing that we noted. Um, then we went to the lighthouse. Um, I think we got another clue, right? We got a piece of paper that had the name on it of, of uh, the... A magician who was responsible for the sinking, I think. Is that what, what our studies had told us? Uh, uh, Larillac. Yeah. <laughs> Larillac is notorious for something. We weren't really sure what. 
Oh, we don't know what. We don't know what. Correct. <laughs> that right. would be a little simple. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, um, and so then um, we went to the lighthouse and uh, well, uh, two characters made their way there slowly because of the storm. The other character got there quickly, uh, found the lighthouse keeper alive, and then just waited for the others to arrive. I think that's where we are, right? Yes, that is basically where we are. Uh, so Nina, is there anything uh, in there that that uh, that Emerin particularly remembers that you think was not covered by the recap? Um, I think that was pretty good. I accidentally covered um, Ash in um, zombie crab guts. <laughs> So that was really fun. Um, but now yeah, you, there was you. a ship. Now you're saying it's an there accident. There was a ship out. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, kind of, sort of, maybe. I don't know. I see. Um, but yeah, there was a ship out in the harbor that had that was like partially sunken um, that presumably the sailors came from. So that's also out there as well. I think that covers everything else that I have. Excellent. A ship. Okay, so you guys are now in the lighthouse. Actually, before we move on, I do want to uh, touch base with everyone and make sure that you have leveled up completely to level two and that you are happy with what you have right now and, and with what you know about your character and uh, that you don't have any questions about anything presently. Nope. I don't believe so. Oh, my stuff is good. Okay. Um, I have one question. Uh, how many hit points does Imarin have? Uh, nine. So when you leveled up you should oh, have gotten more. I probably have more than that now then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, roll us a d8. Two. Okay, and then you're going to add your constitution modifier, which I think is a plus one. Yes. So that's three. So you're going to add three hit points. Okay, perfect. Totally. Thanks. Yeah. Catch. Or better. <laughs> better than better than nine. Not as not yeah. as good as uh, seventeen or eighteen. Um, and then let me see. Let's see if there's any other questions I have. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. All right. So you guys are at the lighthouse, and is there anything that? Um, you would like to do there it's it's still a, the uh, extremely stormy night and it is uh you're sort of being inundated right now with just uh, rain and thunder and lightning and uh horrible horrible weather but you are safe in the lighthouse and the lighthouse keeper appears to be uh just jolly and um and doing his job i mean he's extremely busy because it's a stormy night but uh, he looks unscathed. That's a good thing. Yeah, good. No, the lighthouse seems to be a good place to just ride out the storm. I don't think there's any reason to go back out into those, those the gale and brave that, that treacherous path back to the, the town. Besides, if he needs any help in the storm, maintaining the lighthouse. Exactly. I'm game about. Okay. Okay. Um, we're familiar with him, correct? Uh, from, or at least, are, do we know his name or not at this point? I was actually, well, I mean, I'm assuming that he introduced himself to you. I was actually looking for my, his name right here. You learned that his name is Torpin. Torpin, T-O-R-P-I-N? Yes. And um, Veda is indeed his daughter. And he has been working in the lighthouse for roughly 10 years. And okay. in that time, he has seen many, many things. Um, and he can 
regale you with uh, stories and um, tales of ships coming in and uh, him using his uh, masterful use of the large brazier and uh, his mirror system to, uh, to make it so that, uh, that no ships have crashed uh, in, in the past five or six years due to his expertise with, with his lighthouse equipment. Also, uh, he has um, uh, smaller um, lamps and lanterns that he uses to communicate. And he tells you that on a clear night, he can communicate even with the, uh, the lighthouse that is uh, the, the major lighthouse in the region that is called the Reef House, which is a lighthouse north of uh, Thude Island, which is the island that you're on. And um, it is uh, in, it's the protective lighthouse that makes sure that no one that goes through that area actually runs into the large reef system that is underwater right there. And uh, so if you actually were to look at your map, then you would see that it is just north of Trast Bay, but it's several miles. So you're not sure if you believe him necessarily, uh, but you know, he, seems to be honest so it, it it might be that he's telling you a big fish tale but it's not to be malicious it's more to uh support his assertion that he is uh good at what he does i understand completely <clears throat> what does he Please look like us with... oh, go ahead <laughs> no go ahead <laughs> Oh, I'd ask him, please regale us with the strangest tales you've heard from the sea. I'm sure you've spoken to all manner of seafaring folk that have come through here from strange lands beyond. I'm very curious to hear what the strangest things you've heard them tell you. Oh, boy. Um, well, so first, let me answer the question of what he looks like. He is um, probably in his 30s. He is a human male. Uh, he's scraggly. You know, he has a beard, he's unshaven, he's extremely uh, dirty, his clothes are unkempt. Uh, I mean, he has a physical job where he's constantly getting sprayed with salt water and dealing with dirty, grimy, you know, parts of, you know, rocks and, and, and parts of the stone cliff and, and all of that sort of thing. So, you know, he's a very hard worker, he's very muscular. Um, but he's he's definitely a little haggard. He is he is um, working his fingers to the bone to try to support uh, his daughter. Um, in terms of 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 tales that he hears from other uh, other seamen and fishermen and and you know different crew members, he actually doesn't associate with them very much. He has more of a relationship with the locals than he does with the uh, crews of the ships that are coming in through the area. So he doesn't really have a lot to tell you in terms of um, uh, of interesting facts or interesting places. He's, he's a local, he's a fourth generation local. So he's sort of not really interested in tales from other places. Um, well, he does tell you that the minnows that run the reef house are a fantastic group and he wishes that he was eligible to enter their their guild because uh, he's he's very jealous uh, jealous of their camaraderie, um, and you know that the minnows are the uh, group of uh, founders and lutrinians and um, sea gnomes that are they've taken on a protective role to make sure that none of the none of the ships that sort of move through 
the heavily packed islands, well, relatively speaking, heavily packed islands in the world, uh, they make sure that none of those ships run aground on the reef systems. So he, he is very jealous of that membership, and he is not eligible to be a member there because he is not a founder, nor a Lutrinian, nor a sea gnome. He is a human, so. Well, I'm sure you spend countless hours, more, more than most, studying the ships that come and go. I'm sure you have a collection of wonderful spy glasses that let you see very far. Have you ever happened to come across or see any sh ships bearing this strange sin sigil? And I'll show him the, the symbol we found outside. Oh, the eye? Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. He said he he looks at it and he uh, he kind of looks kind of thinks for a minute. He says, "You know, I think I have seen that, but it's been a very long time, and and I didn't actually see it on a ship. I I think my father told me about that, uh, and I." I don't really remember. Uh, I think, I think that's the House of Adram's sigil. Do you know anything about this house? Where are they located? I, 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 honestly, I thought he was telling me a tall tale. That's that's from before the sinking. He he heard about it from his father. My my grandfather died in the sinking, and my father was but a young man, and I. Uh, I wow, I'm I'm kind of shocked to see that that symbol. I I honestly thought it was a myth. Thought it was something he was using like a, a, a boogeyman, you know, to scare the children into behaving properly and not not really talking to the to the to the crewmen that come in. You know, it's the the whole dangerous strangers and all of that. In fact, I well, I tell I tell my daughter to to stay away from from the crew members that she doesn't know, <laughs> even now. Good advice, good advice. And what was the story that he told you about this house of Adrian? It must have been a, a tale of uh, a terrible house if, if it instilled fear. Well, he <laughs> he told me that the, the house of Adrian was um, uh, a, 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 a powerful merchant house that, that had a patriarch that rose to godhood and uh, uh, became, you know, a king of an entire uh, seacoast in the olden days, and and then was corrupted and fell from grace, and and that that his minions uh, uh, troll, uh, not troll, uh, they they patrol the the docks at night, and they snatch little children if they're not behaving well. Hmm. Does the name Laralac mean anything in relation to this house of Adrim? Nah, not, that's not familiar to me, no. I don't know anything about that. Now you had said that there was not a ship that went down on your watch, but have you looked a little farther and seen that ship right there? And I'm going to point out to the ship that was like a kind of... <laughs> Halfway out of the sea, yeah. he's ruining his uh, safety record. <laughs> <laughs> he ha he has to sort of uh, strain himself to look, and he kind of turn he turns to try to shine the light of the brazier uh, down to that area. And as he's looking over there, a big crack of lightning comes, and it it highlights that entire portion of the enclosed bay. And he says, "Oh, he gets this very stricken look on his face, and he says, but." But that ship made it into the bay safely, and I, I am not responsible <laughs> for that ship's uh, demise. Uh, that, that, that was already in the bay before it crashed. Mm-hmm. I you, see. You I should see. go see if there's any survivors. This is an emergency. Why, why are we standing here talking? Yes, yes, you will not have to change your sign that says days since last accident back to zero. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's okay. already erasing it. <laughs> 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 He, he says, I'm serious. Well, why? He starts like putting on his heavy coat and, and his, his big boots. He says, we got to go. We have to look for survivors. This is horrible. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, just wanted to let you know, good sir, Torpin, that the, uh, there were men bodies on the beach bearing the symbol uh, that you had seen that were of the bogeymen you spoke of. And that ship out there, I mean, put two and two together, my friend, and they may be the bogeyman you were talking about. Oh, 
this is this is not good. This this is this is. I, I look. We have to do things. Uh, uh, the, uh, I have to stay in the lighthouse. I think you should go look in the ship. Make sure there are uh, uh, sur no other survivors. And you need to go right now to the to the mayor's uh, compound and and tell the mayor what's happening. Okay. Go. In storm. fact, we, don't go to the mayor. Go. Go. Go to. Go to the dock watch. And and they will they will make it so that uh, uh, everyone can come out and 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 check the the ship with you. But do you know how long it took us to get here? <laughs> hours. Uh, hours. Oh. Well, then, oh, then, then they move a little slow, as you can see, and I point toward the Amarin and her outfit. <laughs> they they do not move as uh, lively and gracefully as I do. I see. Uh, Yes. Well, yeah. Uh, I, 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 uh, I don't want anyone else to get hurt. I, I just, uh, I, I, I'm worried. I, uh, if there are any survivors out there, well, I, they, they will perish if we don't try to help them. Did we see when, when he shined the light? Can we see the ship as well? Does he have like spy glasses or something we can use? Um, I mean, he, he probably does. Uh, and you can ask him if he has any extra. You don't see any like sitting out anywhere. Yeah, I'll ask because I want to see like what is the status of the ship? Is it still out in the water, sinking or sunk, or is it is it washed up on sure. shore? How how do we get to it even? Yeah, uh, he 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 goes to the uh, to one of the uh, shelves and rummages through a box and uh, wooden box and and he comes out with uh, three little sort of chintzy sets of very very old spy glasses. Um, and he says, "Well, these are these are my my spares. Uh, I don't don't really have a uh, very good set anymore. Um, but here, you can you can try to look with these. And uh, if if the lightning crashes again, you might you might get enough light to actually see some detail." And he sort okay, of hands them out to you. Um, well, let's go. If you if you spend a couple of minutes looking, uh, you see that the ship is. It doesn't look like it has sunk any further, but it is, I mean, it's not afloat. It, it has definitely partially sunk. Um, it is anchored, so it's not, it's not like floating away or sinking deeper, but uh, it definitely was in distress. You did not see any um, movement, right? That there's, there are no, there's no movement on deck. Uh, and you don't see any bodies, and you don't see any people or creatures moving on the boat. What size ship is it? It is a small sailing vessel. A so single it's, mast? It's about 80 feet long by about 20 feet wide. It has two masts. Uh, none of the sails are furled. They're all unfurled and ripped up and... Can I look towards the beach to see if any more creatures have appeared or like bodies have washed up? Sure. Uh, give me a perception check, please. Um, 14. Okay. Uh, you see that um, there are uh, a couple of more crabs down on the beach, uh, and they do appear to be feasting on something. Which can't okay. What it is? It okay. could be bodies. It could be just uh, fish from the barrels, if there were any right. more barrels. So, um, can I ask Torpin if he's seen like any weird uh, marine life, anything like the crabs that we saw? If I like describe the crabs, can I ask him if he's seen them before or anything of that nature? I mean, there's the occasional incursion of large, large crabs that that leave their cove and they come out. And that often happens during storms, but they're usually not disgusting like you described. They're usually red and, and hard shelled and a pain in the butt to beat back but then they they go back to their ocean home and 
they don't usually cause that many problems. I don't I don't ever recall them feasting on people. That's okay. disgusting. He kind of <laughs> he look he looks a little pale. He kind he kind of doesn't like what you described. <laughs> We're traumatizing these poor people. <laughs> this poor daughter. Yeah. It's not going well. I would hardly call it traumatized. <laughs> Well, okay. friends, I, I think the question at hand is if we should brave the storm to go out to try to see if there are any survivors or if it's best to just wait until the storm subsides. I don't know how how effective we're going to be at swimming out to a sunken ship. If there were any surviving sailors, they're close enough to shore that I would hope that they would be able to just abandon ship and swim to shore. Well, if we if we go to the dock watch, they can provide us with some kind of transportation out there. And even if we can't find survivors, we can board the ship to see if we can get more information. Yeah. Because I want to know what this sigil is, who these people are, where they came from. If we can find any kind of information on the ship, I say it's worth it. Plus, sure. we want to break the storm. Be people. How, how far so. away is the dock watch? How long is it going to take us to get there? Well, it's back. It's back on the town. Uh, it's it's on the actual. It's it's basically the 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 longshoreman's. Uh, office so anybody that that docks at the on the port there is going to have to check in with one of the the dock watch stations to you know register their ship say what cargo they had all that sort of thing uh occasionally they hire uh locals to load and, un and unload their ships and things like that um so also, it's a, it's a whole, you know it's a part of the town business basically yeah also if we go to the dock watch um, Torpin said that they had already docked, so they would have had to have recorded what they were doing in the town, like, like you just said, their names, what they had aboard, they would have that information, so we should go to the dock watch and at least talk to them about this ship. Hmm, that's not a bad idea, Emerin. Because if, if what Emerin postulated was correct, that these men that have this sigil are from that ship and the only reason that we're aware of it is because of some kind of accident that befell them in their ship they were attacked by these creatures uh causing their bodies to wash up on shore then yeah there's some possible secretive uh, work afoot right and if they left if they did dock and leave during a storm there is a reason why they left during the storm mm. like i feel like they're hiding something <laughs> Okay, okay and maybe you guys know my vote. Disposable, <laughs> right? I mean, so we don't want to lose the chance to find any clues that might be destroyed or lost in the storm. So okay, let's uh, let's go. That's fine. Great. I'm good. So the the question is, do you want to? So uh, it's going to take you just as long. Well, maybe slightly less time to get from the lighthouse down to the safety of the beach, but not that. It's still going to probably take you an hour and a half. Because the 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 wind and the rain and the lightning and the storm. I mean, remember these are gale force winds, so yeah. there's the possibility that that you'll be blown off of the cliffside. So you're having to be very very careful. Um, so you're talking an hour and a half, uh, or you can wait until the storm passes. Although Torpin <laughs> now is uh, seemingly a little impatient. I say we go now. <laughs> I second that. Okay. Okay. I, Let's do it. I will, I'll risk it. Okay. We'll throw like caution to the wind. It makes for a more heroic time. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right into the wind. <laughs> and it comes right back in your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, I so uh, uh, hold on one second. I just got to shut my door real quick. Sorry about that, should have done that beforehand. Uh, so, okay, so here's what I need from you. I need a, oh, yeah, I need my notes. Uh, la, la, la. I will need a wisdom survival check from each of you. Um, and I will remind you uh, that um, 
Ash actually already has a level of exhaustion. Correct. And so okay, before before we leave then, before we depart, um, I'm going to uh, get out my flute and, and sing a little ditty about uh, braving the, the harsh winds of a storm and give everybody a, uh, what's it called, a bonus die, a bardic inspiration die. Okay. Excellent. I feel so inspired, little one. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me check something here real quick. Oh. Uh, Uh, okay. Hopefully that will help, help help with the treacherous journey. Well, it certainly won't hurt. I mean, I'm wondering if the uh, the Zoc watch is even going to want to go out in the storm. But I guess we'll find out when we get there what they're willing to do. I kind of feel like that's their job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to like go out in the storm. I, I could be people, wrong. Like the Coast Guard. Something like that. Although I don't know how effective these people are. Hopefully, like relatively competent. <laughs> um, so, uh, so Bardic Inspiration lets you uh, choose one creature other than yourself. Um, and you can use it a number of times equal to your charisma modifier. So are you going to use it twice so that you can uh, provide it for both of your comrades? Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, I will say that your words, um, well, so I'll, I'll actually give Ash the choice. So right now Ash has, is exhausted. So he actually has disadvantage on his ability checks. So here's, Here's what uh, your choice is. His Bardic Inspiration can give you the typical 1d6 added mm -hmm. to your roll. And then you'll roll with disadvantage, but then you just add 1d6 to the lowest roll. Okay. Or I'll just let you roll without disadvantage, but you don't get the 1d6 added. I'd rather just take the flat roll. OK. And then. Uh, Imran ha uh, gets to make that check and then roll also a d6 and add the d6 to the roll. So go ahead and make those rolls for okay. me. And then I just roll straight. Yes, and you just roll a regular, a regular uh, wisdom survival check. So mine's 13 with out in D6. Okay. So do you want to use the D6 or you can save it? You might as well use it because it only lasts for a little ten, like ten minutes. Was it like a minute? Oh, 10 minutes? Yeah, okay, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'll use it. So add six, so 20. Okay. Or 19, sorry. Okay. And what did Ash get? 19. Okay. Nice. And what did Axley and, and Axley, oh, Axley got a seven uh, modified with, with his bonuses. <laughs> Friends, you are inspired to go forth. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Axley was so busy uh, giving you inspiration um, that uh, he wasn't paying attention to his own steps that he was making. Um, so what I need from Axley is a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, how does this work? Dexterity saving. Throw. So that is going to just be a, a d20 plus your okay. saving throw value, which for Axley, dexterity is plus three. That's your modifier, and you actually are proficient in it. So you're going to roll a d20 and add five to it. Oh, okay. DC that you want to beat is 15. Oh, that's not good. OK, well, the three straight. So that means six okay. and add five more. So 11 total, right? I think it's so where'd you, wait, no. So you're, you're going to add five total, not, not five plus three. So you, you add oh, three, three for your dexterity modifier, and then 
you are proficient in your dexterity saving throw, so you'll add two more, so that's a five total. So what did you roll? A three? So I rolled a three, so I got an eight. So you got an eight. Okay. All right. Um, as you guys are traveling down, everyone is uh, having a rough time of it, but Axley somehow keeps losing his footing. And at some point, he ends up falling and sliding down part of the cliff. And so if you guys want to help him, I need to know how you would start to help him. As he was falling, Ash would have like would immediately like turn and like dive down to grab his arm to prevent him from sliding anymore. Okay. Um, you want to give me a um, dexterity acrobatics check? Is Imran uh, doing anything? Um, at this point, I think I'm just going to stand by. Um, I'll be kind of near to lend a hand if need be, but um, also not really steady in my footing. So I'll just stand by for now. Okay. Ash rolled a 12. Okay. Um, Ash barely grabs on to Axley's tunic and is able to stop him from falling too far. But, uh... I've got you, little guy! <laughs> but, um... Axley is actually going to take five damage from when he slipped, he hit, and then started to slide down. And Ash is going to take three damage and both of you gain a level of exhaustion, which means Ash actually has two levels of exhaustion. Having one level of exhaustion means that uh, you roll all of your ability checks with disadvantage, and having two levels of exhaustion means not only that, but also that your speed is cut in half. So it actually is going to increase the time that it takes everyone to get down uh, the cliffs. You do finally make it down safely, but um, you end up uh, spending a lot of time and having a lot of bumps and bruises, and you are extremely tired, except Imran, who apparently just sort of took her time and uh, didn't worry about anyone else and yeah. had had more solid footing than, <laughs> than maybe she thought. <laughs> and uh, so that's, that's how it works. Now, when you get down to the bottom of the cliffs, it is probably, hmm, probably like 2 a.m. at this point. So it's not really close to sunrise. Uh, and it's pitch black. It's not raining as hard, but there is a lot of cloud cover, and the lightning has dissipated a bit, so it's very, very dark. You do not, however, see any more creatures moving on the beach, so that's good news. Excellent. Onward, friends. Stay, stay close behind me for our I can only see in the darkness. Well, I was going to say, I have a light cantrip. Can I cast that to kind of help us out a little bit? Um, you can, sure. You can cast light on an object that you have, and it would shed bright light for you, uh, even though it's dark outside. OK. Um, I cast light on my holy symbol pendant on my necklace, and hopefully make it a little easier. <laughs> Um, what did you cast it on? Sorry. 
Oh, Perfect. just kidding. I have to have a Firefly or a phosphorescent moss. So I guess I can't do that. <laughs> ah, so actually, this is a good time to talk about um, components. So okay. I, I am not extremely concerned about tracking spell components. If the spell component is something that is basically easy to obtain or okay. relatively, you know, common enough that you could probably, you know, find it uh, in a shop or in the wilderness or, or what have you. Um, what are the components for that? A firefly or something else? What was Phosphorescent it? moss. Okay, probably you're more likely to have phosphorescent moss because you're in a port town with lots of cliffs um, and less likely to have uh, fireflies in this area that, you, that you're in. But you okay. probably have no problem finding that particular component. Um, probably uh, what I can do is I can go through and I can tell you which components would maybe be problematic to get. Generally speaking, the lower level spells, I just basically say, look, those components are relatively easy to find for somebody who knows yeah. what they're looking for. So yeah, no, we'll just assume that you have that. Okay, perfect. Let's say something so, yeah. like a, a hundred gold piece diamond. Sure. Say that again, you you kind of buzzed out there. <laughs> uh, so if it was like a hundred gold piece diamond, we would still need to have that. That's something that would actually need to be held, correct? Yeah, at this point, because a uh, hundred gold pieces is a little bit out of your range of of ability as a first or second level character. By the time you're sixth or seventh right. level, hundred gold pieces isn't that big of a deal. Okay. Uh, so it's also a little bit relative, but yeah, that's the idea. You know, if you're if you have to have a, a diamond from the far realm, yeah, that's worth at least five thousand dollars. You can't just buy that anywhere. So right. <laughs> yeah. Sounds cool. good. Okay. Cool. So I guess I take my pendant off um, and hold it out and cast light on it, so we can see and make our way. I guess are we still heading to the dock watch? Or are we going to go back and kind of recover? Well, we also need to let uh, Veda know that her father is A-OK -okay chilling out in the lighthouse. Mm, what do you think, actually? Well, I guess we're, we're pretty tired. We're not in any, good sh any shape to... Yeah, we're really not. ...which would be pretty treacherous. Um, how far are we now from the, the inn? Are we... Are we fairly close? You could probably make it there in 15, 20 minutes. Taking and time. what do we need to do to shed our levels of exhaustion, like specifically two levels of exhaustion? What, what does that require resting wise? Uh, so you, um, if you finish a long rest, it will reduce your exhaustion by one. Only one, okay. Yeah. And a long rest uh, is one. Yeah, eight, if you- Eight if hours. You, say that again. So you, a long rest is eight hours. Yes, eight hours. If if you want to shed the other, you need to have some sort of uh, spell cast on you, like a lesser restoration or something that will remove that fatigue from you. Okay, let's, what do we have for healing spells here? Let's see. So a regular healing spell, like a cure, will not remove the exhaustion. What about Yeah, I got word? nothing for that. Healing word is just a regular, it just a regularly heals flesh. It doesn't actually remove fatigue. So your exhaustion would remain. So we're down yeah. for a while if we want to try to recover from this level of exhaustion. Correct. So, um, so the thing is also you can only take one long rest in any 24 hour period. So it's not as if you can do two long rests in a row in one. <clears throat> You have to have a long rest, and then you have to do something else. Or, I mean, you can rest, but then you then you have to rest for another sixteen hours after the long rest, and then do your actual official second long rest, if that makes sense. So, you, in other words, let me put it like this: you can rest for as long as you want, but you only regain, mechanically speaking, 
you only regain the benefits that you get from having a long rest once in every 24 hour period. Okay. So how so, far so, are we? So let me oh, just explain ahead. what you get back with a long rest. With a long rest, you're gonna get back all of your hit points. You're gonna heal one level of exhaustion. You're going to regain any hit dice that you spent up to half of your full hit dice. Okay, so right now you guys are all second level, so you have two hit dice. So when you take a short rest, you can spend hit dice to heal yourself without having to spend a healing spell. And when you expend those, you mark that you've expended them for the day. And then after a long rest, you can, you can get back or re, re, what's returned to you is up to half of your maximum hit dice. And do you roll those hit dice for recovery? If you take a short rest, you roll them for recovery. If you take a long rest, you just end up with all of your hit points at the end of the long rest. Okay. Without having to expend the, the hit dice. Okay. Okay. Um, well, it sounds like with we're, maybe we're better off just going back to the inn and resting, and uh, maybe the storm will abate during the next eight hours, and then we'll be better off for facing voyaging out to that shipwreck. Yeah. Remember that it's the evening before, or well, now I guess the morning of dawn watch. So you're going to run into, if the weather improves, there's going to be a festive celebratory atmosphere. And most people will be focused on celebrating that. Uh, that um, Sorry, how far are we from the dock watch? Like how long would it take to get there? Would it be treacherous? Is it a straightforward? It's right on the dock. It's, it's uh, uh, so if you remember from last week, the way I kind of described the town was it's, uh, there is a bay that has two arcs, one sort of in the north and one in the south. And that mm -hmm. those arcs are made of basically cliffs and that protects the sort of inland bay area. There's a humongous dock structure attached to the town. There's a river that, that is actually emptying into the ocean uh, okay. that's coming, coming from the western portion of the town and traveling east. And on the east side is where that bay is. And the town is bisected by the river and mm -hmm. so there's a, a stone bridge across the river and there's a beachy area, but there's also a huge dock set up on both sides of the river and facing the bay. Um, it's pretty extensive because the main sort of, the main, uh, the, main, uh, the main export of this town is its trading. So it's, yeah. there's a lot of spaces there for large ships, small ships, fast moving ships, slow moving ships. The water is very deep. It's a very deep bay. So, uh, and it's, since it's protected, it ends up being a sort of haven for anyone that needs to get protection from the storm. And so therefore the city has sort of been built up and you have a situation where there is a, a large structure in terms of infrastructure around making sure that people that come in pay for docking and Mm -hmm. pay the longshoremen for helping them load and unload their ships. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of dock repair that goes on to make sure everything is in good order and all that sort of thing. So there are several actual dock watch stations in town. There is a main okay. one um, that, you know, would house the, the basically the boss of, of a, overall the longshoremen. Um, okay. okay. And it's relatively easy to get to, so. Oh, so okay. you're thinking maybe we just stop in there, alert them, and then move on to the inn. And... Well, I was going to say, what if um, Ash went back to the inn to talk to Veda um, and kind of get himself healed up a little bit? And then what if you can either go back to the tavern with Ash or I can, we can go together to at least alert them? I don't know. Because what I don't want to happen is for all the festivities to happen and then those crabs come back like during the festivities. Like, that's kind of what I'm worried about at this point. Um, I don't like the looks of them. They're not natural. They're not anything anybody's really seen. So we don't know much about their behavior. If they would come during some kind of festivities and like do harm to the people, that could be really bad. Um, so I think we need to at least tell someone they're out there and tell someone about the ship um, so that everybody's safe. Okay, I agree with you. That's probably a worthwhile thing. If it's not hazardous for Ash, maybe we should just take him with us, make to alert them, yeah. and then 
and if it's not too much yeah. on him because it's also two in the morning right so it's dark it's we mm -hmm. there's a lot of time left until dawn anyway so we might as well spend yeah. that time with everything. so okay yeah i, I, guess, I agree with that yeah Ash, okay, it's kind of so, up to you what you want to do too, so. <laughs> so, are, so Ash, what would you like to do? Do you want to go back to the Swimming Sword Tavern or do you want to go with them to the Dock Watch Station? Um, I'll at least go back to, I'll go to the tavern to see if Beta still there and I'll let her know. Okay. Uh, I'll be tactful. <laughs> <laughs> <Be tactful. laughs> I trust I trust you can deliver good news with a lot more tact than you can with that. <laughs> nice. My middle name. <laughs> yes. Don't, don't lead off with having found a body. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. don't bury the lead. Just tell her immediately. Her duly noted, duly noted. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so uh Imran and Axley, you're gonna go to the main dock watch station, is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so, Ash, you get back to the Swimming Sword, and things have died down a little bit. M most of the uh, patrons that were there have uh, gone back home or gone up to their rooms, uh, although there are still quite a few people, you know, mm -hmm. nice uh, nightcap. Um, Veda is not there, uh, but Taruma tells you that she, she, you know, she put Veda, you know, she put her in one of the rooms so that she could calm, she calmed her down and she tried to get her to go to sleep, so... Okay, uh, she's happy to, if you tell her that the the lighthouse keeper is alive and well and doing just fine. She's happy to hear that, and she assures you that she will let Veda know as soon as Veda is up for the morning. Do you perfect? Uh, nope, want to rest? Yeah. Okay. Um. So you can get a room. Uh. Taruma actually uh, offers you a room. Um, so actually, this brings up a good point because uh, you came in on a ship, so you actually don't have a house here. So Taruma offers you a room uh, because you went to make sure and check on the lighthouse keeper. She's touched by that, so she gives you a free night. Okay. Um, bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Imarin you are from here so you actually have two places that you would be able to stay you could stay uh at your father's house or mm. you could stay actually at the temple of goras okay um and that, that would be up to you how you wanted to do that or how, what you want to uh you know how you think your character would uh would deal with that um you probably okay don't have a house of your own at this point. Yeah. Uh, and Axley, uh, buddy, I have no idea where you've been sleeping. Maybe <laughs> at the library? <laughs> or probably just some humble pad that I can afford. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've been couch surfing or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, Airbnb. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, so Ash, so let me make just make sure you're going to get that room. You're going to take a long rest. Yes. Okay. Um, and Emran and Axley are going to the dock watch. Yes. Okay. Um, you get to the dock watch office, and it is open but it is uh inside there is only one person there and he is a uh short gruff dwarf with a long long red beard that has lots of uh seaweed and um like pipes you know like smoking pipes different pieces of smoking pipes and seaweed integrated in and, and uh, braided into his beard. And when you come in, he's sort of stroking his beard. And he's, he was looking out the window at the storm, which is starting to let up. And as you come in, he says, ah, 
It's mighty early to be here now. Uh, yeah, sorry to disturb you. Um, we have some information that you might find helpful. Um, we were just down on the beach and um, we noticed a ship had um, kind of partially sunken um, out in the bay. Um, we just wanted to let you know that it's out there. Um, we also found bodies that had washed ashore and they were being eaten by um, crab-like creatures. And we uh, disposed of them, but they were not your typical crabs. They were very um, squishy and smelly and um, they didn't die very easily. Um, so we just wanted you to be aware that those are there as well. To be clear, crabs are normally squishy and smelly. These were more so in a disease-like fashion, gelatinous and- Yeah. And they didn't have very hard shells. Their shells were also very squishy and they like stuck to our weapons and they're really, really gross. Crosses his arms. He sort of leans forward over the counter and he kind of looks, he's looking both of you up and down. His eyebrow goes up. This is some sort of a prank. It's mighty late for you to be coming in here and telling me about this. And who goes on the beach at 2 a.m.? Uh, exactly. No, sir, not, not pranksters. Not pranksters. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> one at a time, one at a time. We're not acting suspicious. Um, no, the uh, lighthouse's daughter, the lighthouse keeper's daughter came into the tavern we were at and um, she was worried about her dad because of these creatures on the beach. So we went to investigate uh, the, um, me and Axley and another of our companions. Where is he? He went back to the tavern. He was uh, roughed up pretty good in this storm. It took us a while to get down to the beach, to the lighthouse to check on the lighthouse keeper, then back down to the beach and all the way over here. Um, he was rather exhausted. Um, we're rather exhausted, but we thought it was really important to tell you. We wouldn't be here at two in the morning if we didn't think it was important. Sounds like you've had a rough night. I'm gonna show him the injuries I sustained from falling. <laughs> so as you can see, I would not come here as a prank with bearing these kind of injuries from the storm if this weren't urgent. And I'm just kind of back here like, mm -hmm. <laughs> He's, st he's still got his arms crossed and he says, he's kind of looking. So Imran, we talked about you having a holy symbol. Did you decide where you're gonna have that holy symbol? Is it visible? Yeah, it's a necklace um, okay. with a pendant, so it's visible. Okay. And it's glowing, so it's kind of visible. Yeah, <laughs> it's still glowing. <laughs> Is it, gl oh, that's right, that's right. You cast it on. Yeah, we still have light on it. Uh, he's, he's, he, 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 sort of leans back. All right. Well, how many bodies did you find? And what happened to them? The bodies were really mutilated. I don't think we could determine how many there were. Um, there was at least one for sure, but possibly more than that. Um, they're still down at the beach as far as we know. Um, my spells probably cast a lot of it everywhere on the beach. So it might be a little hard to discern specific bodies and places <clears throat> from it, but um, there was definitely human remains. You're down on the beach casting spells? Because of the crabs. As we told you, we went to Mount a Rescue based on this girl telling us that her father was in danger. We would not have braved the storm otherwise. Yeah, so I guess I kind of show him my um, holy symbol and I tell him I'm a cleric of uh, the goddess Goras and um, I'm trying to protect the people. Um, I'm using the power Goras has bestowed upon me to protect the people from these sea creatures. They're not, they're hostile. They're not your normal crabs. They, are, they were eating human remains. Um, and I would really appreciate it if you took this seriously. They were I'm, eating oh. the people? Yes. I'm gonna lean in close to him and I'm gonna say in Dwarvish, one might think your doubt could 
could come across as disrespect to good Samaritans only meaning goodwill. <laughs> he, he leans in and he says in Dwarvish, one might think someone who's not a dwarf speaking Dwarvish to a dwarf might upset a dwarf. Okay, I I think I stand in between the two, um, kind <laughs> of just speak hold on everybody. What? Do you speak dwarvish? Yes, I do actually. Okay, okay. so you so know. So I I know what's being said. Hold on, everybody. We just need you to relay the message so that we you can be on guard. You can walk out there and look at the boat yourself. There is a ship out there sunken. We don't know why it's sunken, but there are monsters around. We need you to be cautious. That's all we're saying. We don't want any trouble. We're just asking for your cooperation. We appreciate you being out on guard at night. And sometimes these things happen at night. So pretty please. Okay, so I need a persuasion, charisma persuasion check from Imarin. I knew that and, was coming. And for <laughs> Axley, uh what's Axley's goal with speaking dwarvish uh to the to <laughs> well I'm, I'm guessing it was a bit of a an intimidate I mean you know I wanted I was to gonna say off. that sounds intimidation to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> I I was wondering but it's about motivation and not so much uh anything else so then go ahead and give me a charisma intimidation check from Axley okay all right uh, 12 plus four so 16 and what did Imran get? My persuasion is 11 total. Okay. Uh, he backs off ever so slightly. And he sort of, he doesn't turn away from you. He sort of keeps giving Axley the stink eye. <laughs> but, but he's, you know. He's he's sort of like straightening his tunic and like trying to do something on himself that's that's not threatening. Uh, and he reaches over and he pulls a big uh, sheaf of rolled up parchment papers, and he spreads it out, and he says, "All right, um, what's the ship's name?" Um, it was an unmarked ship, so we don't. No. Um, as far as we can tell, we, we couldn't who, read anything. Who brings a ship into the dock and doesn't have a name? I'm, I'm not sure. He now uh, We were hoping... He steps down off of his, whatever his, whatever kind of step stool or whatever he was standing on, on the other side of the, of the counter. He steps down off of that, and now you can see sort of how short he actually is. He's only about three and a half feet tall. And he walks around and he goes and he swings open the door to the outside and he looks out over into the bay in the area where you had been telling him about. And he looks and he stands there for about 20 seconds silent. And then he slams the door and then he comes back in, goes around the counter without saying anything. He steps back up onto his, whatever his little step uh, pedestal thing is and he says hmm. well do you claim the ship do we what now do you claim the ship you mean like claim as the salvage like is it yours if it came in with no name it's unregistered it's obviously unmanned do you claim it? Wait, time out. Can we show him the symbol with the paper on it? Can we ask him if he'd seen those people? Because the ship had been in port. You don't know. Can you pull out the paper? All you know is it was in the bay. Oh, it was in the bay. Yeah. I didn't. Oh, okay. Urban said it got into the bay. He didn't say it was actually in the port. In the port. Okay. Yeah. You... Can we still ask him if he recognizes it? Uh, you can. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh roll me a let me uh, for both of you roll me a um let's see a wisdom 
Just give me a wisdom check, a wisdom ability check. All right. Oh, that's like an eight. Um, 13 total. I got an eight total. Okay. Um, Imran, you feel a little... Because the lighthouse keeper said that this was related to some sort of deific mythology and that it was obviously it's something that is maybe not um friendly uh maybe a little uh, let me put it this way your uh religious training at this point sort of starts to make you feel like maybe you shouldn't show that symbol okay. around <laughs> given that what what the lighthouse keeper said about the fact that it's kind of a boogeyman that that is related to some sort of mythology that is probably evil you might not want to be showing that symbol around around town to everyone maybe Got in it. a library or maybe in a specific set of people that you that you trust but maybe Got not it. anybody so you okay. might you might think twice. Uh, Axley doesn't have okay. any such qualms. He just is. He's he's all about the knowledge. And you know what? It's not like you guys are are that are 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 spreading around that symbology. So you know he has no problem asking a bunch of people about it. So, um, yeah, his 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 intuition is not telling him anything is wrong with with asking about that particular. But I didn't ask. <laughs> okay. I, I'm still standing in between you guys at this point, so like if you're trying to pull it out, I'm like swatting your hand away. Um, <laughs> so I guess yes, we we claim the ship. All right. Well, you've got 24 hours to get it out of the bay, and he points sort of in the direction of where the bay was. Gone. And to get it to the dock, and then when you get it to the dock, you got to register it. Okay. Do you know anyone who can help us do that to raise a sunken ship from the bay? Well, you'd have to talk to the shipwright guild, I suppose. Okay. Okay. I guess that's all we really need to do here, right? He seems largely unconcerned if there's any, any help. Yeah, that I. True. <laughs> Uh, well, when you told him there were bodies uh, on the beach, he sort yeah, of, you know. <laughs> put two and two together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, there's nothing else I want to ask. I'm good. You good? I'm good. Okay. So we have until 2 a.m. the next day to get this ship upright and into the port and registered. Okay. That's right. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate you. Um, we appreciate you doing your job and um, we will be um, very diligent about bringing the ship in and getting it registered and we will make your job very easy. Um, so with that, I turn to leave and he says, "Wait, wait, ahead. wait!" And he shuffles around under the under the, his counter, and he pulls out another sheaf of parchments and he runs through and he pulls one out and he rolls it up and he hands it to you and he says, "Bring this in when you get the ship in." Yes, sir. Can I unroll it and look at it? Sure, sure. It's just a, a registration form. Okay. Perfect. We will do that for sure. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. thank you for your time, your ill temper, and your customer service that would make a goblin proud. <laughs> I'm shoving you out the door. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, mm, good riddance. <laughs> okay, so we have a ship. Mm -hmm. I guess we should probably go back and tell Ash. <laughs> yeah. As the door is shutting, just uh, but right before it shuts, I'm gonna turn to him and say, "By the way, did you happen to ever hear the one about the dwarven longshoreman and the cucumber?" And I'm gonna cast hideous laughter on him. <laughs> oh, jeez. <God>. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
Uh, oh boy. I don't even, <laughs> I don't know if I want to know what that is, quite honestly. Um, well, <laughs> your, your bard is not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's your line again? We all love an audience. Hey, audience. <laughs> <He's Canada Council. laughs> he has uh, to make a wisdom saving throw. Yes. Or or fall prone in fits of incapacitating laughter. <laughs> what is your uh, spell save DC? Is that based on charisma? That yes, that's going to be eight plus your charisma modifier plus your uh, proficiency bonus. Charisma modifier is four. Proficiency bonus is two. Two is that right? Yeah, two. Yep. So it's plus six total. Okay, uh, I rolled a sixteen. Okay. So he <laughs> he succeeded on his save. Um. <laughs> so he uh. <laughs> he 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 doesn't find it funny. He he <laughs> does the thousand yard stare, and he smiles, and he's stroking his beard. And he says, "I will see you later." And he smiles <laughs> like this, like this really forced smile. Good night. <laughs> Technically, good morning. Yeah. Yes. 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 So you make your way back to the tavern, I assume? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, Taruma, Taruma tells you or shows you which room that, uh, that Ash is in. Do we bug him at this point or do we just wait till morning? So when, when you take a, a long rest, basically you can, so basically the, mechanically speaking, you need six hours of uninterrupted kind of rest. It doesn't mean you're actually sleeping necessarily, but uh, at least non-elves need six hours of, of uninterrupted. Because uh, the rule is that you can spend no more than two consecutive hours on watch during that time, and you really can't do anything strenuous while you're doing a long rest. So you can't be up cleaning and, you know, right. but you can spend, you know, a, an hour or so maintaining your equipment, making sure your armor is polished, your weapons are sharpened and all that stuff, but you can't spend a ton of time doing very rigorous activities. Um, okay. So, uh, so you can disturb him if you think that he won't be upset. I mean, that's for him to, you know, to decide you you, you were probably at the watch at, at the at the dock watch for maybe only 20 minutes i mean okay yeah i guess okay. we should go up and tell him that we need to be like on top of things tomorrow because we have to raise a sunken ship and get it to get it registered we um, have a ship to so claim yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay yeah, we'll go upstairs and we'll knock on his door. <laughs> um, so, Ash, you hear a knock, but it's up to you whether you want to actually answer the door. <laughs> I'm still dead asleep. Okay. He, uh, you get no answer for your knock on the door. Can I knock louder? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be a little forceful about this because we it, this is gonna be a challenge. Thunder strike. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Taruma would be very happy with that. Oh God, poor no. <laughs> uh, I yeah, mean, I knock. I knock louder. Yeah, you can pound on the door if you want. Um, okay, I'm I'm pounding on the door at this point. Ash, it does wake you up, but it's once again up to you whether you. <laughs> right. Or... I do one of those. I flip over on my back and I look at the door as it's being pounded on. And internally, I'm debating I really shouldn't answer the door. I'm really tired. But reluctantly, I'll swing out of bed, go out, and I'll open the door. And I am in nothing but a loincloth. <laughs> uh, 
and there's there's drool out of the corner of Ash's mouth, and his hair is like half in front of like all in front of his face, like he literally just woke up. Who's now, there? Ash, what do you want? Ash, did you did you clean yourself at all after getting fish guts all over you? I was gonna say yes, I, I was gonna say the same thing. Yes, had, I did. He had time because you guys he was waiting for you at the lighthouse for a couple hours. So Yeah. That's had good. Okay. So there there are not any uh remnant fish guts and crab parts on him, but his his fur is definitely uh matted and uh shabby. It's ready for a bath. <laughs> um yeah, no, so I want? guess I hand him the registration document. Um, oh, so it's we, you. <laughs> yes, it's us. <laughs> um, so we spoke with the um, dog well, here, watch. Come, come in, come in, come in, come in. Let's not let's not speak in the hallway, and I'll invite them in and close the door. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> um. We spoke with the dock watch, and I guess since the boat isn't registered under any name that we know of, we get the ship. So it's ours now, and we have 24 hours to get it upright and into the port and registered. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm going <laughs> he runs his paws through his hair. He's like, we couldn't clean the ship after it was salvaged. We have to do the work too. That's yep. I'm getting too old for this. But and he'll start tying a uh, tying his uh, hair in into the back as usual. And well, let me get I mean, somewhat we don't somewhat have to presentable go right now. Go oh, back to thank. sleep for at least a little bit. <laughs> Within like three, that he is now literally passed out onto the bed, face okay. down, just uh, snoring. Okay, at least <laughs> you're aware of the information. So we, I at least walk out of the door. I'm as I'm closing the door. Please take a shower before we meet in the morning. <laughs> He's dead asleep. He's out. No. Okay. I tried. <sighs> I'm not sure there's such a thing as a shower. <laughs> or at least clean yourself up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I guess actually, where are you staying? Um, will she give us a, a room or um, do we need to? Yeah, I mean, She'll she'll give you a room. You can either stay down in the common room and just sort of throw your like bedroll and stuff down there, or she'll probably give you a room if she's got one open. Yeah, I'll take a room. Okay. Sure. She she will do that because you guys checked on uh, Torpin. Okay. Um, I go back to the Temple of Goras because I feel like I should at least give some kind of thanks to her for. Uh, keeping us safe and not letting us die out in the storm. Okay. So I will stay at the temple tonight. Okay. Um, okay. So what time are you guys going to rendezvous in the morning? Um, I guess it kind of depends... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, Ash needs to be roused from his slumber, as difficult oh, as it is, otherwise he'll sleep. Okay, I guess I get up at like nine and start making my way back to the tavern. Okay, so uh, the dawn comes and it's still cloudy, but it's there's not a lot of rain. So the uh, the celebration, the celebratory, you know, kiosks and the, the market stalls and whatnot that have been set out are not as uh, festive, maybe, I guess is the best way to say it, as they should be or the, as they would be. 
um, and people are now, you know, pointing out the the half sunken ship in the bay, and uh, the town is awake, and there's lots of hustle and bustle around, uh, and there are there are some sort of circus style festive games happening here and there. Um, you know, strongman games where you swing a hammer and you're trying to make the thing go all the way up to the bell. Uh, you know, things where you're trying to throw darts and, and sort of circus, you know, fair style games. Um, but there's a lot of people around, but it's it's definitely not as festive as, as previous years of Dawn Watch. And uh, there's, there's obviously a sort of a tempered celebratory mood um mm -hmm. the fact that the sky looks like it could open up at any moment and start pouring down again i think has people a little nervous so um it's not as crowded as it could be but it's not as quiet as it could be either okay um actually what time did you get up uh, I probably just would rise with the dawn if I'm not too tired. Okay. Okay. Are you staying in the tavern or are you going to go do something else? I'll just stay in the tavern. I'll, I'll uh, get a cup of some hot drink and just see who's up and make conversation until my friends are awake. Okay. Um, so as long as you don't do anything too strenuous before 10 a.m., you will get all of your hit points back because you'll have officially completed a long rest. Um, okay. And uh, as as Matt said, uh, you'll have to go rouse Ash, otherwise he will not come out of his room. So <laughs> he was resting before you were, so he, his long rest officially ended before yours. Uh, but either way, you're basically up to full health. You have all your spell slots back. You have all of your hit dice. And uh, and you are well rested. You lose one level of exhaustion, but not both if you had two. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to make my way, like I said, to the tavern. And if I'm there, um, greet Axley and go upstairs to get Ash. Okay. Uh, I would assume Ax Axley is already there. Axley, are you? Did you eat breakfast? Yes. Are you regaling the patrons with uh, with your tales of crably woe and Crab climbing slang. cliffs? <laughs> sure. Why not? Okay. Exaggerating it completely out of proportion. Are you <laughs> a, are you a writer? Do you write your things down, or are you completely verbal? What's your what's your yeah? Opinion? Definitely a writer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so you probably spent part of your long rest committing some of some of the the night's tales to uh, to parchment. Yeah, I'm making notes about the things we learned, the names and okay symbols. And probably embellishing the uh, interaction with the dwarf at the <laughs> dock watch gate. <laughs> I will admit him completely awesome. from my from my <laughs> Nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So in <laughs> you find Axley in the tavern, uh, mm -hmm. uh, probably eating a, a, a large breakfast. But Ash is not there. So uh, Ash, are you easily roused or are you uh, are you resistant to being awakened? I'd say uh, if I if I was able to finish a long rest, I would be relatively easier to wake up. I might not be happy about it, but I'll get up on a, on a regular knock. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you you did finish a long rest, so you're probably e relatively easy to rouse in that case. Perfect. <clears throat> uh, so and now I'll get dressed and <laughs> head downstairs. S slick your hair back, put some palm oil in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so you're down. You're down in the tavern. What are you gonna do? Breakfast. I'm starving. I was gonna say I probably haven't eaten either. So yeah. Okay. Grab something before we head out. So um, probably we should probably make a plan too. 
uh, decide what we're going to do, where we're going to go, who we're going to talk to to help us get this uh, ship out of the bay. Now, are you running a tab at the at the tavern, or are you paying as you go? Um, pay as we go. Okay. So for your meals, you're going to subtract two silver pieces today. And she gave you room for free. And if you had uh, two drinks, whether they be ale or mead or some sort of juice, uh, mm -hmm. that's two copper pieces. So two silver and two copper are what your food and drink cost you today. What's the breakdown per gold and, and silver? How much is it? Oh, that? so... Uh, uh, one gold piece has ten silver pieces in it. Okay. And, and silver has how many copper? And one gold piece has a hundred copper. So a gold, if a gold piece is a dollar, mm -hmm. then a copper piece is a penny, and a silver piece is a dime. Got it. Did we split up the money we got? Because I haven't written that down. Because we if were I'm, arguing about that last night. Right. Because <laughs> I, I took a, a much reduced chair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got a piece of paper. Yeah, 80-20. You guys took it. You guys, <laughs> you guys took your share. There was no, uh, there was no hassle before. <laughs> Uh, the the gold the the coinage that you found last time was just fourteen gold pieces. I mean, just fourteen. So, actually, fourteen gold pieces is quite a lot of money to find on the beach, basically. Um, but, uh, but, you know, for for all intents and purposes, when you're talking about raising a ship and and having to repair it and all that, that's going to be not much money. Well, good morning, Captain Ash. Good news, you are the captain of a boat. The bad news is <laughs> the boat's at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's not all the way sunken. Remember, it's only about partially sunken. It, it, it looked like it was sinking, but it never actually finished sinking. It was kind of just stuck there. We'll find out when we go see what shape it's in. It's the perfect time to find a crew and have the crew bring it out of the water. Well, I think first we should check well, it out. You can just get a rope. Yeah, let's go check it out. See what's. Uh, Who's got a spare dinghy that we could row out? Well, as it turns out, uh, today being the. Uh, the dawn watch day, the dawn watch celebration. Uh, most of the rowboats and small vessels are being set up to run a kids race on the other side of the docks. What is with Ash being foiled by the children? <laughs> uh, so um, you'll probably have to find uh, someone who has a small, small vessel who is not uh, using it today, and you can possibly rent it from them or offer to buy it outright. I am going to, sl I'm going to slam my tankard on the on the bar and 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 shout, "Who here has a small dinghy? I may hire for cheap." <laughs> um. <laughs> So, <laughs> roll, <laughs> this is good. Um, oh God! <laughs> you're yelling that out in a bar. Some of my take that the wrong way. <laughs> roll me a uh, wisdom insight check. Oh dear God! Fifteen. <laughs> okay, uh, you think that th there are three uh, men who look to be fishermen that are sitting at a table in the corner. Who probably have a at least a small rowboat that you could. I'll go over to their table. Okay. Mm. I'll uh, pull up a stool. Good morning, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't help but see you from across the room, and 
quite possibly smell you from across the room. Um, but something- I think I'm gonna walk over to, I'm gonna stand behind you. <laughs> something tells me that you may have a, uh, a ship, a vessel I may acquire for a little bit, if oh. you would be so kind. What tells you that? Well, you smell like fish. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly shame. don't look white collar. You smell like <laughs> rotten crab. <laughs> yeah, well. So, so we're kindred. We're kindred in this. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> we're in it together. So, might one stinko from 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 another might help each other out in this instance? What do you think? Uh, well, um, I was going to use my rowboat later today. Mm, how much are you going to rent it for? All right. I didn't want to have to do this. But how about eight silver? Eight silver? You must be kidding. That's how about one more gold? than you make in a month? One gold? Oh, jeez. How about we play a game of chance for it? Like what? Do you guys have a deck of cards? And I'll look over at my companions. See if they have a, any any oh. cards or any dice. No. Why don't we just flip why don't we just flip a silver piece? And if it's on your side, it's you know what? silver. If it's his side, it's a gold piece. See, he's the brain, and I'm the beauty and the brawn. <laughs> if I I'll, flip I'll it, to the fisherman. And... Call it Go heads ahead. or tails. What do I get if I win? A gold piece. A gold piece. If you lose, if you, lose you get eight silver. Sounds like a win-win to me. <laughs> okay, flip it. <laughs> Okay, I'll flip it for him. He looks, he looks, by the way, really confused. He's like, <laughs> he's super <Yeah>. confused. <laughs> I, I want, I want to okay. use sleight of, I want to use sleight of hand to cheat. Okay. You can cheat uh, with my, my coin flip. <laughs> I don't know what I got to do, like bump into you <laughs> or whatever, but I want to, I want to cheat in our favor. Okay. You can uh, my sleight of hand. Okay. So, um, which one of you still has a level of exhaustion? Is it Ash? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you're gonna roll roll me a, a dexterity sleight of hand check with. Well, actually, how are, are you gonna bump into him and try to make him like fumble the coin until it shows up the right way? Because that would be like an acrobatic sure. check. Sure. Sure. Okay. Now, uh, what's Axley doing? Is he catching on, or is he like? oblivious to what ash is attempting i'll uh, seductively if, if, wink at him <laughs> if he, I, I probably don't know what he's doing if he's, if he's bumping into me okay okay so go ahead and give me uh just for ash give me a dexterity acrobatics check and that's uh gonna be um contested by the uh wisdom insight check of the fisherman 27 that's with disadvantage right because you get it oh, yeah. oh your... wait <laughs> 26 <laughs> oh um okay so he doesn't see it he doesn't see i mean he okay. sees you bump into him but he doesn't realize at least doesn't seem like he realizes uh, as the coins in the air he says heads 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 Heads, and he gets really okay. excited. Okay, and now I'm going to cast my minor illusion cantrip and make it come up heads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so you see it land, and it lands on heads. And the fisherman goes, yeah! Congratulations, sir. A gold piece to you. Pay up, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him a gold piece. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. This is your uh, lucky day, sir. <laughs> he says, 
It's tied down uh, right off of the slip number 23. Uh, it's a little bitty rowboat. It's got uh, three oars in it. Don't lose any of my oars. No promises. <laughs> and I walk out headed toward the three oared boat. Okay. So you guys have no problem finding the the rowboat if you if you want to go look for the rowboat. I don't think it's we should go looking for the rowboat just yet though, because we don't have any way to actually get the ship out of the water. Well, right now we're just inspecting it. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know okay. how seaworthy or not it is. I mean it, it may still be floating fairly well. We just may need to tow it to the right. Boat. Okay, if I guess we can swim. Yeah. This would be a good time to speak up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we should all be able to swim at this point, considering we've grown up in a terrain filled with water. <laughs> but I'm good. I guess we can go. I Lead mean, on, Ash. It's What's several, up? It's several hundred feet off the beach, the, the boat. Okay. Um, the, the actual ship. Okay. And yeah, you can swim, but um, you know you you don't necessarily want to swim several hundred feet in your scale mail. Um, so That's and also if, if you find anything on the ship, how would you get it back? Like it would be difficult to carry it back without having the rowboat. I think that's what. That's, I mean, is that's it dangerous to even go in the water with scale mail? Like, if she falls in, will she sink and not be able to swim? Uh, I. Possibly. Um, so maybe since off. we're going to ship, maybe we should maybe we should just take our armor off so that we can we can shed water, tread water easily, and not sink to the bottom. My well, armor does not impair me. The the bay is pretty calm, right? I mean, it's there's no remember the storm is basically gone. It's just kind of overcast and cloudy, and it could start storming at any time. But right now, the bay is placid. So you're you know, you're talking about rowing out two or three hundred feet. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay. Um, if you want to take off your armor, that's fine with me. It takes uh, just a couple minutes to do that. All right. If you're not worried about it, that's fine. I won't. I won't fret. Well, the DM never worries. <laughs> that's I'm comforting. Talking, I'm talking to her. <laughs> if she's the one who would sink to the bottom. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm all right. We'll be okay for now. I'll just kind of. I'll stay on the boat. For Think for the little, thoughts. The little, yeah. All right. <laughs> so you're so you're gonna go get go get the rowboat and go out to the ship. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you row out to the ship, and um, you notice that it looks like at one point it did have a name on it. Um. But it's it's obviously been scraped off uh, pretty harshly, so it's impossible to tell what the name was. Can't tell at all. Uh, and as you as you get over to that area, um, the ship is actually so you can actually there's quite a bit of the ship above water, so you can actually get out of the rowboat and go inspect a, probably 70% of the ship uh, in your first estimation. Okay. okay. Yeah, let's do it. Yep, we're going. Okay. Um, so go ahead and give me... Well, actually, the first thing that you see is painted in blue, in blue paint on the top deck the main deck of the ship. It has a it has a forecastle that is still above water. The 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 aft portion of the ship is partially sunk, but the forecastle is completely above water. And in between the forecastle and the aft castle is the main deck. And right in the middle of the main deck, there's a mast there, but painted around that mast on the deck itself is in blue paint a large symbol like the one that was on the tunics of those gentlemen. So it looks kind of like an eye with 
uh, the spikes. spikes spikes coming out of the top and bottom, and the eye the eyelid is halfway closed almost, and you can see the pu pupil peeking under it. And the way that they painted it, the mast is coming out of the pupil. Lady Emmer, it appears your your supposition was correct. I don't know how I feel about that, really. <laughs> um, okay. Um, is there anything else like above deck that we can see? Um, any possessions, anything that would have suggested there was a crew working? So, um, I mean, the boat had to get here somehow. So there had to be a crew at some point, but you spend roughly an hour searching through the boat, uh, just the par the portions that are not submerged at this point. Okay. Um, and there are no crewmen aboard anymore. Okay. There are uh, two, there are two quarters that had like beds and tables. You would assume one of them is would be the captain's quarters and one would be like the first mate or the quartermaster those have blue eyes painted all over the walls and also scribbles of letters like paint painted with a paintbrush like and it's and it's runny and it's impossible to tell what it says uh but it's obviously you know someone's maddening gibberish written you know in paint um and then and then they, and then after that, they painted the eyeballs over that, which is part of the reason why you can't read it because it's been partially covered. Um, that's in both of the crew, the main crew decks. Um, down in the main, the lower deck, there is nothing. It's completely empty. There's no paint. There's no sign of anybody. This is where part of the crew would sleep if they weren't, you know, like the not, not the captain and not the ship's surgeon and not the quartermaster. Though they would normally have like hammocks hanging up for people to sleep when they're off duty. Nothing. It's completely empty. It's, it's as if it was emptied out and there's no sign of anything ever having been there. Mm. But when you go down into the hold, first of all, a lot of the hold is submerged. So there's there's uh, there's a main deck with the forecastle and the aft deck on it. The, court, the, the court, it's called the quarter deck, and then there is the main deck that you were on. That's the exposed to the outside, and then there's the lower deck, which is one deck below that. That's where you're at right now. It's completely empty. When you go down one more, you're in basically the cargo hold, and in the cargo hold, there it's partially submerged, but there are ten crates. Uh, either partially submerged or floating that you can actually retrieve. Um, and other than that, no crewmen, no other signs of anyone having been on the ship recently other than um, the, the blue eyeball paint. Um, I vote someone other than myself go retrieve some crates from the water. <laughs> Yeah, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right, I'll go grab a crate. Well, there's 10 of them, and they are various sizes. Uh, it's going to take some time if you want to try to fish all of those out of. Does it look like, does it look like we'll be able to get the ship out before we, so that way we can look at the crates simultaneously once the ship is out of the water? Yeah, so actually, if you, you can probably uh, swim underwater and, and try to look at uh, how much damage there is and make an estimate of what repair is needed. I'll do that. So to do that, you're going to need, let me see here real quick, to do that. Oh. I put my, so my notes aside, darn it. Um, to do that, you're going to need to, uh, 
So it appears these uh, these individuals did not want anyone to know where the ship was taken from. It's a good chance it was stolen and the previous occupants disposed of if there's no room for a crew. Could be. We'll also need to repaint oh, it. This decor is that, disgusting. Well, it's indicative of smugglers maybe, right? So we should, definitely should find out what's in those crates. So uh, you can make me a intelligence investigate check. And if you have, so I think you have like navigators tools or something like that. Yep. Do you have any carpenters tools or any kind of skill with that sort of type of knowledge? Um, I'm proficient in, ships, so. yeah, I'm proficient in water vehicles. Okay. So yes, that will help you. So, uh, you can actually make your check. So you actually would have disadvantage, but you, but your advantage that you would get from that proficiency will cancel your disadvantage. So you can make a Perfect. rate roll. Okay. So that is a 20 unnatural. Okay. Unnatural. Do they call that a dirty 20? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so you estimate that um, actually there is not a lot wrong with the ship. There is not an extensive amount of damage. There are small parts of the hull where the outer uh, covering and the, and the structure, the framework of the hull has come apart, and that's what caused the leakage. Um, and it is only very, very slowly sinking. In okay. fact, you, you estimate if there hadn't been a huge storm and there was a crew here, the ship would not even be underwater, that they would, they would have been able to stop okay. this part, part of the sinking portion here. Um, and probably from what you know, maybe you're going to have a day in dry dock to check this out and fix it and maybe i mean it sort of depends on the skill of the people fixing it but maybe one more day to just make sure that everything is you know the things that aren't obvious to you right now are all yeah. checked out okay so amazingly not a lot of extensive damage although the ship is not outfitted at all it's as it's as though it's been stripped you know stripped of everything other than those 10 whatever whatever's in those 10 crates okay uh, any did it, did that get any kind of hint as to how we could get the ship out of where like it's stuck or whatnot? Um, you can probably tow it up and just uh, have them use their winches to pull it out into dry dock. Okay, lift it right. We out could tow it with the dinghy. Out. We're capable of doing that. If we Not with your rowboat. Not with your rowboat. Okay. It's way too heavy. But with another ship. Yeah. You can probably just attach it and the, the, the actual longshoremen and everything at, at the docks would be able to arrange for that. Now it would cost some money, but they could. Okay. All right. So I'll come back to the surface and oh, as I climb back into the dinghy. All right. There's good news and bad news. The good news is that the ship is salvageable, there's not too much damage. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and I pull out like a snail from like, <laughs> but like I swallowed a snail and then I threw it away. Okay. Anyway, um, there's not too much damage to the ship. We should be able to salvage it, but in this little dinghy, we will not be able to get it out. So maybe we could go talk to the shipwright or perhaps the, the dock guild or, or whoever you talked to last night uh, and they Maybe would be not able that to option. Help and help us get the uh, the uh, ship out of the, uh, its its current predicament. Let's say that's, that is good news. I clap him on the back. You've proven yourself to be quite a valuable seafaring expert, you old salty dog. Oh, no offense intended. <laughs> He's pissed. <laughs> first it was uh, first it was the uh the trick the illusion and now it's with the comments <laughs> actually it's on thin ice well actually uh 
uh, roll me a. Um, I don't. Do I don't know. know what it was an illusion, or you might have yeah. thought you just botched your your skill. Yeah, you you need to roll me a uh, perception check, a wisdom perception check with disadvantage to see if you uh, saw through that. Sixteen. Uh, I think that beats his spell save DC. What's your spell save DC? Thirteen. Um, what was it? I think it's thirteen. It's eight plus your charisma modifier, which is four plus two. Four plus yeah, plus yeah. two more. So, so he yeah. so he did see that you cast. Okay. The illusion. He saw the cat. Okay. Well, let's investigate those crates. Uh, I'm curious. I'm very curious to see what it was they were transporting. That may give us a clue as to what they were being so secretive about, or what their motive was. Well, you might have to uh, get down there pretty quick by the time you're done with them. Better start the old uh, plug your nose and go down there, little guy. <laughs> Do we have any tools that would allow we would, we could pry the uh, boxes open with? Is there anything that we could use? Uh, I mean, do you want to open them in the sh in the hold that's half full of water? Yeah, no, it's loading. Can we like just can we what? move one up into a dry area? Yeah, I mean, you can you can work to get all all ten crates into the area that's relatively dry. Um, but th what happens is you run the risk of if you open them up and they fall over or if they're rotted or whatever and they, their contents spill out, they're going to go right into that water. Well, let's at least open one. Let's get an idea of what we're dealing with here. I mean, you know, if it's rubber dog poop, we're not going to be too concerned. <laughs> um, the uh, Bardic Novelty Guild sent over a yes. <laughs> shipment of dog poo. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, roll me a, uh, let's see, one, two, three, roll me a d10. Okay. Uh, I rolled a four. Okay. Uh, you haul a, um, one of the crates up and you pry it open and it is full of little barrels that are about three or four inches in diameter and about six inches tall just filled with those That's tiny yeah they're really small um but they they're dry like they were in a crate protected so they're dry do they look familiar to me as a as a uh, seedman um there are lots of things that could be shipped in small containers like that. Often it is either things like spices, sugar, salt. Um, my, my fear is black powder. Yeah, so usually gunpowder is shipped in larger barrels. OK. So should we open one just to see what's in it? Is it a liquid? Is it a solid? Is it recognizable? You if can. you feel you must. OK, I'll open one. Does it have any kind of little cork? Or is it, how is it sealed? How's the little it's, barrel sealed? It's a barrel, so you'll have to uh, pry open the top, which is sealed with the wax. So once you've unsealed okay. it, it's not going to be resealable unless you heat the wax. OK, I'll try it. I'll open one. OK. Uh, you pry it open, and it is filled with a white, powdery substance. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not exactly going to taste it. <laughs> I was going to say, who's going to taste it? <laughs> yeah. Does it have any kind of odor? Um, uh, smells like. In the in this uh, hold, everything, all of your all of your olfactory senses are overwhelmed with the salt water, brackish salt water that's yeah. filling the hold right now. So you can't get a separate smell off of this little container. Okay, I'll seal it up as well as I can, and then put it back in its place. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, 
could be anything. There's a lot we know it's not now. Um, and that's just one box, so one crate. I was gonna say, we have 10 crates left. We do know at least one of them was carrying fish though, right? Because we had a barrel of fish guts spewed everywhere. That is true. There was a barrel so. of fish guts. <laughs> so the, but, the question is, do you want to open all the crates? Do you want to try to get the ship back to dry dock? You know, uh, yeah, so. I say we dry dock it for Dry dock, dry dock it. Back, right? We have to leave the ship, we have to row back, and we have to find somebody who can, with a larger vessel, that can come tow it. Right. Yeah, yeah let's head back. We have a decent idea of what is in the ship, what we need to do. At least it's not like a ton of work to do, um, but we still are on a time limit. What time is it? Um, it's probably mm, around noon, noonish. The sun's okay. high in the sky, although it's covered. Should someone, should someone stay with the boat so no one, while we're gone, no one sees a half sunk ship and gets the bright idea to come poking around and take anything that's not nailed down? That might be smart. But we just leave them on the ship, just stranded on the ship. <laughs> yeah, you gotta swim back to shore. I, I, I can swim. I can stay if you want to. If you both want to row back and find somebody to uh, to do the tow. You don't want to talk to the shipping guild. <laughs> oh, I have some. Yeah, it might be a good oh. idea to leave. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe you should stay. <laughs> but I also worry that there's like. I'm very paranoid. I'm gonna worry that there's like creatures in the barrels that are gonna attack you while we're gone. <laughs> like those crabs can come back. Halfling and I don't want you to be by yourself. What? Halfling meat is very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> so they tell me. Uh, well, okay. I mean, if we're, if, if we're not gonna be gone too long and I guess there's no real danger. It's been here all night. No one's gone and taken it. Yeah, exactly. I think, I guess it'll be okay. We all go. Yeah. Sounds good. Back to shore. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. take the little, I'll take the little, the little barrel I already opened with me, the small one. Okay. Okay. Um, and so you're not staying with the ship? No. Okay. Uh, okay, so what are you guys doing? So you row back. You make it with no problem. This, the bay is still really easily, uh, you know, e easily, uh, it's easy to traverse across the bay as long as there's no storm. In fact, remember, this is what this, this protected bay is known for, is the ease of getting in and out of it. Okay. Um, I kind of don't want to go back to um, the dock watch people, so why don't we... Well, they have... Right they haven't met me. Maybe I could go. <laughs> so, uh, so here's the thing: is that the the dock watch? I mean, so what you want to do is get somebody to tow the ship, correct, into the dry dock. the the dock The dock master is not going to do that for you. You have to uh, contract with somebody to take their ship out there and bring your ship in, and then you have to contact with the shipwrights and carpenters to get your uh, ship a spot in the dry dock uh, and then repaired. So the uh, so the dock master could give you, you know, he could refer you to someone, but he's not going to be the one that's going to negotiate that at all. Right. Um, does our knowledge of the area, um, do we like know of anybody that could help us out? Like just since we've been there for a while? 
Well, your family is part of I was going to say, can I pull that card out? <laughs> sure, absolutely. I don't see any reason why not. Okay. Um, yeah, so my father is a part of the shipmaking guild. Um, he could probably help us out. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so I guess we head that direction. We go okay. home. Or head Probably to his workshop. His office, yeah, his workshop. Yeah. So okay. Uh, so so now I need to know how your father feels about you now that you're an acolyte in the Church of Boras and uh, you're you're no um, longer, you're you're really obviously no longer doing right. field work. Um, I don't think he's like terribly upset about it. I think he's like a little bit hurt, but not like, like he doesn't want to show it kind of okay. thing. Mm -hmm. Like we're not on unfriendly terms by any means. Sure. Okay. Um, as far as I know. Okay. How much uh, pull does he have in the guild? Like what's his rank? Is he... Uh, he's obviously not an apprentice, but is he just a journeyman? Is he just a worker? Is he, does he take part in decision making for the guild? What's um, he, like a master craftsman? What's his, what's his position? Yeah, he's mostly just um, like a general craftsman. He doesn't really have a whole lot of influence because um, okay. he is uh, relatively new to it just because of the sinking. That's how he got into it. He wasn't in there beforehand. Um, it was just something available at the time. So he does, he hasn't like worked up in the ranks yet, but he does know like pretty much everybody in the guild. It's close knit. So he knows people, but he doesn't have pull particularly. He would have to go to the higher ups. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, I mean, you can go meet with him if you'd like, and he can definitely send you to someone who could help you and uh, he can either negotiate that for you or he can let you negotiate it yourself. It's up okay. to you. Would you like him to make the deal or would you like to? Make Probably it? him. Okay. Uh, how much money do you have to spend in terms of paying for this service? So there's a few things going on. There's uh, towing the ship there's right. putting the ship in dry dock and there's repairing the ship. Um, so I guess after we had split the money um, and paid for the meal, I personally have uh, one gold, seven silver, and eight copper on me, if I did that math correctly. Okay. <laughs> so not very much. Yeah. Uh, so, so the... What was the price? I didn't hear. Uh, so you guys are at. Um, so Emmerin's father is part of the Shipwright Guild, and mm -hmm. um, so he's he's going to arrange for your ship to be towed to the docks, to be put into dry dock, and to be repaired. But he's asking, uh, as he negotiates that, he's asking how much money you have uh, in order to put toward this particular task. And Imran said, uh, one gold and seven silver or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which is not a lot. As uh, I so, am saying yeah. my um, finances, I'm kind of projecting it to, the, to my group behind me um, because it is all of our ship and we're all working together on this. Uh, I have I have eight gold I can put toward. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Ash isn't offering any gold. Well, let's see. Let's see where nine gold gets us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Imran, you're. By the way, you're. Do you do you know what your father's name is? Um. Kurt. <laughs> Um, we'll go with, um, Jeff. <laughs> Ron. 
I'm definitely blanking on names right now. He's he's a human though. Yes, human. Okay. Um. Alan. We'll go with Xavier. Okay. For now. Good name. Okay. Much better than proposed ones. <laughs> <laughs> Classic dad names. Uh, <laughs> it's like uh, when all the NPCs are named Bob. This is yeah. Bob. <laughs> Who's this? Oh, this is Bob. Bob the carpenter. Who's that over there? That's <laughs> Bob the cook. Who's that over there? Well, that's Bob the night watchman. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so okay. So uh, Xavier says he sort of he smiles and he gives you that that father look. Yeah. And he says, well, he says, um, uh, how big is this ship that you're, that you're wanting towed? It's not, it's not a raft, right? It's a, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pretty, it's not huge for sure, but it's, it's bigger enough. than a raft. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're probably, t- Imran, we're probably talking about um, a couple hundred gold pieces worth of work here that you're asking for. Uh, I, I, I can, I can, I can make promises to 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 the shipwrights, but eventually they're going to have to get paid. Uh, how 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 are you going to make the money to to pay for this? Are are you gonna are you gonna start using the ship for commerce? I, I I thought you were I thought you were working in the church now. In, in the church. I I know. Um, God, I know. <laughs> this was probably a bad idea. <laughs> I'm regretting my decision. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm not. I know it's. <laughs> we haven't figured out all the details, but I know we are going to be traveling, and we we can. There will be opportunities to make money. In different places, people need different things. There's always something to be done. And I think we can do that. He sighs a really large sigh. Oh, okay. um, I'll I'll arrange for the ship to be to be pulled in. Uh, uh, I think they might be able to do it today. There's not a lot of work going on because of the the, the celebration, but um, we we can help them if that would help lower costs. We can help them bring it in, even uh, if it's by two gold. But it it we can help make it go faster. I have a few spells that might be helpful. We can we can help all three of us. I'm gonna volunteer the other two because. <laughs> I I I think it best if if I just arrange for them to bring the ship in. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know when it's when it's when it's in. Uh, but I have to. Uh, do have you registered it yet? We haven't yet. Okay. Well, um, you'll have to make the registration before they'll be able to release it from the dry dock. So I. Uh, I'll, I'll arrange it. I'll arrange it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I give that like daughter stare. Like thank you. <laughs> uh, he he sort of he sort of looks at you for a minute, and then he, he turns and goes. Okay, that was a little heartbreaking. Um, so <laughs> we go. We got to get it registered then right we're gonna have to name this thing so i hope you guys are like thinking of names because i clearly am blanking on that right now you have to name it. i'm gonna be zero help with that um okay so back to the dock watch to register this thing okay or do we have to get it into the docks first so uh They'll be pretty quick at getting it to the dock. So I, I'm okay. going to give you guys the ship information and you're going to have to name it and you're going to have to register it with all, you know, like the size. You also have to register a captain and a quartermaster uh, and any other known officer aboard. Okay. Uh, 
And uh, then, of course, you're probably going to have to hire a crew of some sort because the ship is big enough for that. Um, so here's, here's the data on the ship. The ship is... The ship is 80 feet by 20 feet. It has two 80 foot tall masts. It requires 20 crew. It can hold 15 passengers. It has an 80 ton cargo capacity. And you estimate its travel pace as about three miles an hour uh, with the sails fully unfurled. You will need, okay. at a minimum, a captain, a first mate or quartermaster. Usually that is taken up by the same person. The captain, of course, issues orders, steers the ship, takes the wheel, and also makes sure that the mapping is done correctly. Uh, first mate or quartermaster directs the crew and also navigates and can help with map making. The bosun is in charge of repair and maintenance of the ship. Uh, you probably need a ship's cook, which will provide meals based on supplies and is therefore responsible for making sure that there's enough supplies for the whole crew. And then you'll need probably 16 crew. You could work with a skeleton crew of those four positions and probably 11 others. So you would have, that would be 15 people instead of 20. Um, also, lots of ships this size have a ship surgeon who is responsible for tending to injuries and making sure that there are no uh, illnesses that are able to spread throughout the crew. Scurvy. Scurvy, <laughs> rat, plague, things like that. Uh, which means you're going to have to, you have to at least register a captain with the ship. And if you don't register a captain, you register an owner who then is the default captain at that time until you, if you want to change that documentation. You also need a name for the ship. I nominate Lady Emerin as captain. I myself I'm, can't serve as quartermaster as I'm not a quarterling. <laughs> and since it's not a half master for a halfling, I will myself, I would put myself in just for a ship's cook. <laughs> Uh, so, so I'll let you. You guys don't have to do that right now, okay? Because yeah, we're, that, that's cool. Nice so we're actually going to switch to the to the. Um, I'm going to tell you what was in the crates, and then we're going to switch to the actual discussion part of the episode, okay? Okay. So uh, if you want to write down what's in the crates, there is a the box. Uh, there is a crate that is filled with uh, rotting, uncured shrimp. It's really stinky. But also in that crate, you found a pouch with 75 gold pieces. I'll take that. Who found it? Hey, <laughs> That's we have to question. pay back my dad first. That's top priority. Anything we find here goes to my dad. Okay. Yeah, um, who finds it? That's me, because if, if uh, well, Ash so finds what, it, we'll I, never know. I, <laughs> we'll never I'm, know. I'm saying you're... Uh, you're all going through the boxes at the same time. So <laughs> uh, I'll let you guys work that out. You find one crate filled with sacks of gunpowder. So oh. gunpowder. Um, which actually is not that much. It's, it's actually not that much. Uh, you find two crates of candied nuts. Oh. Two crates of salted fish. Two crates of spices, one of which you already opened and you saw the little small kegs in there. They're, the small kegs don't all necessarily have the same thing in them. There's a variety of different types of spices in there. Among them, sugar, salt, uh, something that is akin to paprika, and uh, something that's called dessel root, which is actually uh, quite a bit like tobacco. Um, that is dried up and used as a spice, but also is smoked. Um, and then there is a crate of robes, and the robes are, um, half of them are blood red, and half of them are jet black, and all of them have that eye symbol embroidered on them. 
And then the last crate is actually has a chest inside of it that has 11 amethyst gems. They are imperfect gems, and you estimate their value at roughly 20 to 25 gold pieces each. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay. I think we can pay for the ship. That's good. So, uh, some things that you need to discuss uh, are, first, you need to make sure you pay back Imran's father, Xavier. Yes, please. Um, you need to make sure that you have enough money to hire a crew. You need to figure out what kind of crew you're going to hire. You need to find out what you're going to do with these goods. If you're going to try to sell them, get rid of them, store them, give them to the library, whatever you're going to do. Uh, and then you also have to uh, have some some money left over to actually supply the ship. Um, because I assume you're going to eventually sail this ship out of here. So. Uh, that actually is what's going to determine when you need to hire that crew. Because if you're going to sail out like as soon as you can, you need to hire that crew as soon as you can. If you're going to wait, if there's anything you want to try to research in the library again, you need to decide that. Uh, you need to decide where you might think you're going to be going. You need to decide if there's anybody else in town that you want to talk to before you leave. Okay. And so with that, I'm going to go take a bio break, actually. So feel free to talk amongst yourselves so that our audience isn't completely absolutely bored. Um, and then I'll just be back in a couple of minutes, and you guys can talk about those things. Cool. Okay. Well, I think we definitely should cash out as much as we need to to pay off your father. That way, we're free and clear right. with the, the debt. All right. Um, so, since we don't yeah. even know yet how much we're talking about, it right. costs to outfit the ship and everything. So we don't even know if we have enough for that higher crew and everything. So that may be a determining factor as to whether when we depart, because if we need to procure more money and more contracts right. or funds or something he and said do... like around 100 gold so if we dedicate like the 75 gold pieces and one or two of the amethyst gems i yeah. think that will cover it so then that leaves us with nine minimum amethyst gems which is 180 gold pieces minimum yeah um god how much what would it take to hire a crew? How much are we thinking? I don't know. It depends how, how good or bad the crew is that you want. Right. <laughs> oh, and it depends if how often do we have to pay them if it's a one and done kind of thing. Right. Or it, so are we going to have yeah. to pay them on a weekly slash monthly basis? Yeah. It also kind of depends on like who the people are that we find because if we're doing someone a favor by like transporting them somewhere and they're like willing to be part of the crew i think that's like a different sort of payment does that make sense kind of, kind of like yeah, hiring I mean, people that we're going to leave yeah. anyways well and it's also what do we tell the crew we're doing because there's a big difference between a crew that you're you're hiring right. on what, just what actually are we yeah, because if we're going in to seek fortune or, or something, maybe the crew wants to work for a percentage of the plunder or the, or the discovery. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know my goal particularly is to find my mom. So mine is just exploring. So we're not really going to be going anywhere in particular per se, but exploration is our main goal. Um. Yeah, we were wondering how much it like actually costs to like hire one person. Like what is, is it a pay and you're done or is it like a weekly type pay or is it? It depends on what you want to offer. So if, okay. you want, if you can offer a crew member, generally speaking, the sort of generic crew that are just sort of, um, you know, their tasks would be, um, you know, uh, checking the rigging, making sure the sails are, are well-maintained, uh, making sure that um, the, um, you know, being a lookout, cleaning things, fighting in case you run into pirates, things like that. Those sort of generic type of crew members, you probably would offer them like a gold piece a week or something like that, if even that. I mean, it kind of, that's a lot of money actually, but okay. you're expecting them basically to be on duty all the time. Um, yeah. 
you could also, if you're going out on an exploratory mission, it's possible to advertise as we'll give you, you know, we'll split a tenth of the take amongst the crew. So the more that we go explore and find treasure, the more the crew gets. The less you find treasure, the less the crew gets, but you're not, it's not a contractual basis where it's oh you're at least going to get you know one gold a week or whatever like that so you can do it that you can do it either way you can make a deal if you hire a captain instead of being a, instead of one of you being the captain you can hire a captain um and that person would probably get a wage along with a portion of whatever the taken you know whatever treasure you know the thing is that you guys are exploring, but you're not necessarily just going out to find treasure. So, right. uh, it, you know, it, but that doesn't mean that the crew has to know that, right? Like you, <laughs> you might not want to necessarily let the crew in on what your actual main goal is just yet until you know them a little better. Okay. Um, but the, the thing is that you also know it's really dangerous out at sea. So what you don't want is to get out there and have a crew that is so unhappy that the morale goes really low and they mutiny on you, which is, uh, of course, a problem. Um, so you want to be able to make a good enough deal that you feel like they're going to be loyal to you, but a good enough deal also that you're not spending all of your time trying to make sure you make enough money to pay them. Okay. Uh, but it's up to you how you want to try to finagle that particular kind of, you know, contract. I mean, let's okay. be honest, you also haven't even figured out how you yourselves, the three of you, are going to split up the treasure. Uh, <laughs> Ash thinks it's going to be... One of us has. <laughs> fair. <laughs> um, That's so, fair. You know, <laughs> those are things that you, that you might want to think about as well. Um, but theoretically, you okay. can do it any way that you want. Uh, you know, one gold piece a week is a lot of money for a regular crewman. You know, we're, we're talking about a situation in which... Uh, the sort of average well let's see if, if we look actually in the player's handbook there is a, a a downtime listing that says what it costs to have a certain standard of living so if we look at that on page oh where is it uh page 157 there's a table at the bottom of the second column that talks about lifestyle expenses and it basically says uh the cost of living a, a relatively squalid lifestyle is a silver piece per day. And uh, if you're wealthy, it's going to cost you four gold per day to maintain your lifestyle. That's not buying anything new. That's maintaining what you have. Paying servants and things Paying like servants, that. having an entourage, making sure your horses are fed, your everything, right? Uh, if you're an aristocrat or a nobleman or a royalty, it's going to be, you know, minimum 10 gold per day just to maintain what you have. Uh, so that wealthy category is actually probably more expensive in this setting uh, because also the issue that you run into is there's a lot of bartering that goes on because after the sinking happened, you know, it's not like you're in a nation where they have a mint and they're printing money, right? So mm -hmm. It's really based on what somebody put, what somebody agrees that a value of something is. So a lot of things are in gems and statues and trinkets and not in actual gold. Although, you know, gold coins, because they're gold, they're, they're worth money and they're, but they're not, you know, there's no, there's no such thing as a Traston Finn coin, right? There's no, there's no uh, city state of Trast coin there's no island of food currency it's just what something is valued at and it's been a short enough time or conversely if you think of it this way a long enough time after the sinking that people are still thinking in terms of monetary exchange in an economy especially the port town because they deal with trading goods but uh, it's not quite so cut and dry, black and white as, oh, well, it takes a gold piece per day to live a modest lifestyle. It's, it's a little dirtier than that. It's not so, but that's a decent guideline. So if you pay, you know, you're going to consider your crewmen to be probably living a relatively poor lifestyle, not squalid, but poor. So they're going to need two silver pieces per day to maintain that. And if they have any kind of family at all, they're going to need a little bit more. So you know, if you offer them a gold piece a week, it's probably a decent wage, but not the best in the world. But most people are in the squalid category, put it that way. Yeah. 
well, we, we want a good crew too. We won't, we don't want the bare bones, ragtag, disloyal crew, right? We want people to sign on. So I, I'm just throwing this out here. I propose we're generous. I propose we want skilled individuals. I think we should say, we should maybe do a contract where we split 50-50 with the crew. So the crew gets to split up amongst themselves 50% of whatever we find and yield. And then we split the other 50 amongst the three of us. How about 60-40? <laughs> Sixty forty. I'm on board. <laughs> I don't know. I agree with Axley. I say fifty fifty. It just sounds better for fifty fifty, right? You want to right. be you're loyal. If, you know you're going to half. If if yeah. you, you're going to for for saving ten more percent, you're going to you're going to send a message to them that they're not equal partners. They're not as important. Well, we're also officers, and they're just crew. So that's actually another question. Are, are you guys going to be the officers and you're going to hire a crew or are you going to hire a captain and a first mate to run? The I, mean, ship? I think we're going to we're going to have to hire some skilled officers. We can't manage the whole ship by ourselves and we need people who are skilled at doing those other jobs. So I think we're going to have to put our trust in some skilled individuals. In so, uh, yeah, in some. That's why I think if if we hire skilled individuals, so like if we don't have a first mate or we don't have a uh, a, a surgeon say they'll be part of our 60 so we still don't get we still don't get the full 60 we yeah. share that with the other officers you so mean instead, our 50 that's uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get even less <laughs> but be optimistic think of the the untold wealth we are we'll, we will reap through our adventures 50 percent is still going to be a mountain which you can climb so the, upon the other way to think about this is if you hire a crew you basically hire the captain and his first mate and then they bring their crew and they're the ones yeah. who get to decide what they pay their crew and you just have to deal with them and give them the portion of the money that's the other way to do it. Yeah, but what I'm worried about is the crew would, will get restless and fall out of trust if they see us getting a bunch of rewards and they're still getting their measly silver piece a day pay. I think in order to inspire them, and if we're if we're if if we're if we're reaping a, a, a huge reward from our adventures, they should get a good share of it too. Right. I feel like that's putting a middleman in between like us and the crew. And I feel like that is just a recipe for mutiny. Like in my opinion, because then you yeah, have like I, someone, you have like us and then someone who's kind of close to us and then them, and yeah. they're more likely to side with, I, I, I don't like that one. I, mean, I definitely think one of us should either be the captain or the first mate. One of those one two of positions. us should be like kind of in charge of something but yeah. probably, I don't know. Mm, someone should probably be the captain because someone should probably decide where we're going. Yeah, I agree. You, I mean, I think we should have final say, right? We don't want to defer to someone else. Yeah. So, yeah. So as, as, the, so owners first, of, as the owners of the ship, you get to determine the terms of, of how okay. that works, right? So, yeah. you know, it, but uh, if one of you takes the captain role that so basically here's the thing the crew is going to have to take orders from the captain and the first mate and possibly the bosun if repairs need to be made so whoever has those roles um the crew is going to be used to taking orders from that person whether it's you guys or whether it's someone you hire either way as the owners of the boat even if you hired every other position, they're still beholden to you because you own the ship. So, you know, the captain would be uh, more like a privateer where he's hired on to do a job. It's not his boat, yeah. but he's going to need to make a good enough wage that it's worth it for him to keep his. But you don't want to have you don't want to have a situation where the captain of the ship and the owner of the boat are in odds about what's what needs to be done. Absolutely agreed. Absolutely. Right. Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. So I still nominate Lady Amarin as captain of this fine vessel to yet be named. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know how I feel about that. 
And Ash, you strike me as a wonderful master at arms type of individual to keep the ship secure and safe. I vote, I vote Ash captain and Axley first mate. <laughs> well, this I is an interesting dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> so what then, does Im what does Imran do? Uh surgeon or yeah. My my thought was immediate surgeon. See, mine was two, but I actually didn't pick spells that are mostly healing. They're or... mostly attack spells. Mm -hmm. Right, but so you know. Uh, I know, uh, yeah, none, I, of the, none of the crew is going to know your spells, right? Like that, they, yeah. like they're, they're going to be ex expecting you to be able to, um, in mechanical terms, you're making a medicine check, you're sewing them up, you're making right. sure the wounds get cauterized, right. you make sure it doesn't get infected, you make sure nobody gets scurvy. Like that's right. Right. We're not talking about modern day medicine or even that they would be expected to be healed by you. It's yeah. It's more about you're taking care of right major injuries or because her father is a member of the shipwright guild she could also be head of repairs and she has a solid foundation of a you know of a a voice in the back of her head who knows kind of repair and whatnot with her connections to the guild right. mm -hmm. that was my other yeah so the bosun yeah so we've got, so who's going to be captain then? <laughs> he votes in, I, I, I vote me. I think for captain, we need someone who, who has the good of all and, and the, the, the ability to command and, and, and speak true and, and wise and have the deity on their side to bless us in our travels. Actually, what are you doing? Are you the cook? <laughs> Is that what we decided? Yes, yes, I refuse to be anyone's mate. I will be the cook of this fine vessel. So first mate is off the table for you entirely. Like you won't do it. <laughs> I don't see how I could do it any better than anyone else. I, what, what's the... Then I, Can you I, list off... Sorry, can you list off responsibilities for sure. captain versus first mate again? So the captain uh, basically is the ch chief person on board. So whatever they say, everybody's going to follow. That's the first mate. Okay. Any major decisions are going to be made by them. That's how the crew's going to see it, right? Okay. Now, you guys actually could decide that any major decision you're you're going to all three make together, but the crew needs to see one captain. Right. Okay. Um, so they're going to issue orders. They also will take the wheel. Okay, so they're going to steer the ship during the you know part of the shift, right? Uh, the first mate slash quartermaster is going to be they're the second in command, and they actually make the crew schedule. That's why they're called the quartermaster because they are the ones who set up and make sure that all jobs are being covered at all times. So the crew is actually directed most of the time on their day-to-day -day duties by the quartermaster or first mate because that's the person who's saying well we need somebody to be you know fixing the sail so that's your job today that's what you're doing and you over there you're out on the port side and you're watching and you there you're going to go up in the crow's nest and you're like that's the person who basically makes the duty schedule okay okay if that if that's the case then I would have, if if Axley won't do it, then Emrin I would have nominated for first mate. For first okay. mate. The other thing the first mate does is navigate. So when, when when you're trying to decide where to go and you're looking at navigation charts or you're creating navigation charts, the captain and the first mate are the two that really do that. Okay. Okay. And does anyone have any navigation skills specifically? I mean, is there skills for that? Like. Nautical navigation. Yeah, so there's uh, there's a nav navigator tool kit. There's a set of tools. There's a proficiency you can have proficiency with them. That Which will Ash allow. has. And if you have proficiency with water vessels, then that actually allows you to have some knowledge of navigation of water vessels. 
Um, so Ash seems like more of the, the, the suited for those navigational duties. Yeah. Based on his abilities. The bosun is in charge of repair and maintenance. So when you're basically in off times or when you're when it's not necessary for you to uh, to be uh, doing uh, sort of reg regular you know, when you when you're doing so basically the, the, when you're on a ship you spend half of your time doing your kind of main job and then the other half doing other things that need to be done right so you're going to spend if your job is mostly in the crow's nest you're spending like half your shift in the crow's nest and then the rest of your time you're spending helping with repairs or sewing new sail or checking the rigging or doing repair and maintenance type of things. And the person who schedules that and who makes sure that those things get done in a timely manner is the bosun. Okay. Okay. Uh, the cook is uh, responsible for ordering and making sure that supplies are there and used appropriately and that they uh, are cooking for the crew and that everybody gets enough to eat as necessary. Um, and then can also tell the quartermaster, you know, hey, we need to have people fishing because we're running low on stores of food or whatever, right? So that that's an interaction thing there that has to happen. Uh, and then the crew, basically, their jobs are being lookouts, making sure the riggings are there, adjusting the sails, making sure the mast uh, it has everything uh, set up correctly, doing those sorts of things, cleaning. Uh, if you're boarded, they're, of course, going to fight, things like that. Um, and the ship's, ship surgeon is going to, of course, tend injuries, make sure that they quarantine anybody who has something that might be infectious, making sure that uh, everyone is healthy enough to do their regular jobs. Okay. So. The bosun okay. sounds like a perfect job. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like just a does the repairs. NPC, non-player character. So just we hire somebody to do that, do all the repairs and stuff. And as far as like surgeon goes, I mean, that's like taking care of the general health and well-being of the crew. For, I, yeah, that's probably not something that you should take on. I mean, you've definitely got your ability to help from for major injuries and things. Yeah. So from listening to that, are you sure you like don't want like a higher up position actually? Uh, I guess, I mean, I, I'm fine with whatever you guys want me to do. I just think that as far as being well suited for the job, I think, I think you'd be a great captain. I think Ash would be a great navigator. It doesn't mean we'd have to divorce. We, we have to keep that with first mate. We can make the navigator part of another position too. I mean, yeah, I mean, as, so, the, as the owners of the ship, you guys can designate whatever you want. Um, right. If you're going to hire people, you have to use a language that they're going to understand. Okay, so my thoughts, I think Ash should be the cap, okay, I think the captain position should be kind of split between the three, so we're all making, like, the decision, but obviously it comes from Ash. So I say Ash is the captain, I can be first mate, and anything that you want to do, actually, really, but you're Cook. also, like, a part of, like, the decision making so you're not like entirely left out is what I really don't want to happen I don't want you to feel like like we're making all the decisions and you're like down in the kitchen well, making food well regar time. regardless I don't think that would happen even if you were scrubbing the poop deck I, I think that no matter what we would all be you know I think we would all right. be be doing that anyway regardless of what position you were in it would always be the three of us making making sure that all three of us are on the same page since we're the owners right. of the ship anyway yeah okay. yeah we're all three so, yes you know, the, owners the question, of the vessel. yeah right. we're all the owners of the vessel the, the question really is what do you show to the crew right like that's because right. the thing is if the crew starts seeing that you three can't make a decision you're you're gonna decrease morale, right? Like yeah. they there has to be a unified solid front, which means that the crew has to look to one of you as the captain, even though we know that you're all making the decision. So that's the thing that you guys maybe right. I mean we could talk about you could talk about this offline and you could decide how you're actually gonna present to the crew and what positions you're gonna hire and what kind of offering that you're gonna make to those people. So let's let's uh, put that conversation yeah. on hold and i mean I, based on well based on that last comment uh 
from Nina. I'm good with that. I mean, it, it sounds like we're, we're at a point where you both are good with Ash being captain. And if you take first mate, I'm fine with that. Um, okay. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah, and we can talk, we can chat more about it later too, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it's more about making sure that you, whatever you present to the crew is is unified and cohesive. Not, yeah, not going to erode morale, right? Because no. as yeah. soon as you know, if, when you're out in the open water, as soon as one thing goes wrong, and they need a leader to step up and say, "Okay, here's how we fix this problem," and nobody steps up, or three of you step up and it looks like there's infighting, as soon as that happens, the crew is going to not, you know, it's like having a bad boss, right? They're not going to listen to you anymore. Uh, or you might split the crew, right? Half of them will say, oh, but we like, you know, Ash is a really good leader and we're going to follow what he says. And the, the other half says, yeah, but, you know, Imran really knows, you know, how, how the ship works. And, you know, so, and then you, you end up with this sort of infighting thing happening that is a real huge hazard in a setting like this where, you know, so I'm just trying to make you aware of some of the, I mean, the, uh, part of this is just, it feels like minutia, right? Like, and it really is kind of minutia, except when you get out mm -hmm. on the open water and you're in the middle of nowhere and you're looking for land and you're yeah. about to land, uh, you don't want to all three go off onto some desert island somewhere. And then when you come back, your ship is gone because the crew decided to get the heck out of there, right? Like, sure. You, right. you don't want to have that situation occur. And right. so, yeah. And, and if there's chaos in leadership and there's no, decisions being made right. and like, the crew doesn't have confidence in uh, you know the ability of the leaders to make proper decisions that exactly. take their interests into into you know respect then right. yeah they'll they'll take off and so those. there is a what is called uh, it's it's a, the loyalty mechanic in the dungeon master's guide it's also called a crew quality score it's sort of a mesh I'm using a sort of meshed version of that where you can track individual crew members and sort of what their status is in terms of how loyal they are to you and how likely they are to do whatever you ask versus basically the next time you go on shore leave, they're going to like decide not to come back, that kind of thing. Uh, and then the, then there's a whole crew quality score, right? So individuals get a loyalty score and the whole crew gets a quality score. And the, the better the quality score for the crew, then they're more likely to uh, stay healthier. They're going to have a better morale. They're going to have their experience is going to increase the more weeks they have on the ship, and so they're going to be able to perform duties better and more efficiently. Things like that. And then when they do that, then that actually bolsters their morale even further, and you end up in a, a vicious cycle in a good way, right? All those things support each other. Uh, right. But what happens is as soon as one of those things start to erode, the whole thing starts to fall apart, and so. That's something that gets tracked by me, and you'll get clues about that based on NPC interactions with the crew. Okay. okay. Um, so we've got about 15 minutes left. <laughs> so let's actually get, let's uh, let's go out into the metagame world. Let's break the fourth wall here. How do you guys feel? Good, great. It's a little yeah. slow start. We're not even we're not even off the island yet, but we're we're getting there. We're getting there. We got a ship, I mean, so that's like, a start. Yeah, really. But like you said, it seems like a lot of like minor details, but really in reality, it's kind of just setting us up for, because what's minor now is going to be either like a huge problem or a huge advantage later in the game. So it's, yeah. I don't know. I, I like the... I like this. This is like a definite me thing. It's the organizing. It's the getting everything prepped. It's that, and I I like it. So okay, good. I'm happy. <laughs> Excellent, good. Um, how do you feel about? Uh, so there uh, actually, uh, in order for preparation purposes, uh, I feel like you don't have a lot of information about where to go. So oh, what, are you, what are you thinking in terms of what, what your next step is? So let's, let's presume you hire a crew, right? We're going to do that, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to hire a crew. You're going to be able to leave the island. Where are you going to go? Well, we need charts, right? We need to do some study to even know what's around the immediate environment of the island and where we, may, we might want to go. Well, and also, if, if uh, Emeryn's goal is to try to find her mother, like, do we know what direction to go for that? What, what clues do we have? 
So that's building off of a question you asked me in the previous session, Sam. Um, you asked me like, what is prompting me to leave? Um, and I kind of came up with an answer. Um, I kind of figured after like becoming an acolyte and studying in the library, at some point in time, I had like a dream of like a certain place. Um, oh. I don't know what that place is at this point in time, but I feel like it was like a vision from um, Goras telling me I need to go here to get information on my mom. Um, so I, I haven't pinpointed on the map where that is going to be, but I kind of feel like that's where Emeryn's headspace is. Like I need to get out of here and go to that place. Okay. Have you told anybody about this dream? No. Okay. Okay. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do in the next session then is run through that dream sequence. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and so that is going to be a sort of, uh, it's going to be a mixture of, of items. It's going to be part vignette where I'm telling you what you're seeing. It's going to be part okay. flashback because you're going to be, we're flashing back to when you were having that vision, right? Okay. And it's going to be part scene. And so uh, Matt and Dave, you'll play NPCs in the vision, okay? And we'll run a whole scene that way. Uh, so okay. you can see uh, how that works. And so that you guys have an experience of what her vision is, even if technically, if your characters don't know, you'll actually uh, have an idea of what's going on there with her. Okay. Um, so that'll be the first thing we do in the next session uh, is do that. Cool. Um, there is, so, uh, we didn't really address the Laralac uh, paper oh. that you saw, yeah. Earlier. And um, and I sort of pushed you in a different direction this time because I I gave you the idea that you that you sort of maybe stopped needing to show that eye around. Um, which, uh, by the way, that ship just got towed to dry dock, and now there's going to be some people in there looking at this eye on the thing so you might you might mm -hmm. think about that you might want to try to do something about that okay. uh as you uh, uh, just think about it um the second thing is uh you actually can go to uh people in town or to the library itself and try to find out about other libraries which is something oh. you haven't done. So you know that there's really no other, I mean, you you sort of ran across the name Laralac uh, in the library a little bit, but you didn't spend a lot of time uh, doing that because it didn't seem related to what either one of you, Axley or Imran, were looking at. Um, and so uh, it seems as though there's not very much in the library in Trast and Finn about that particular individual. You can actually then right. want to find out other information. You can find out where there are other libraries. Okay. So that okay. might be something that you want to decide to do. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, that'll take a little bit of research in town and in the library. So, you know, if we're thinking about if it's going to take two two days for your ship to get going, there's a few things you could be doing in that time. You could be hiring your crew. You can be washing the eyeball off the ship. You can be figuring out a name. You can be deciding how you're going to apportion the tasks of the crew. You can be doing research in the library um, and stuff like that. So, so right. those are things that we didn't really touch on this session, but that you could actually touch on next session uh, yeah. if you decided to do that. So if you're, okay. so, you know, if you're looking for a place to go, you're going to have your vision, and then you might also look, uh, look up where other libraries could be. And in fact, I will send Ash some information because Ash actually has been on an island before that had a really big library. So we can deal with that. Um, and then he can either tell you about it or you can have to research it, so. Um, so. Yeah, libraries being the repository of all of this world's knowledge would be a good place to start to solve some of these mysteries. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, all right, so what else? Uh, how do you feel about your characters? 
Excellent. If we bump <laughs> up to third level. We did? I'm saying if we do, which oh. you probably will either in between sessions here or very soon after the, the beginning of the third session uh, that's coming up. Uh, so um, if, if that happens, you're, you're going to have a huge bump in power, okay? Because really, first and second level are very sort of low power. Uh, they're kind of beginner training wheel kind of versions of the classes. And it's really at third level that, that the classes really kind of, you get your sort of main, you know, if you pick your path or your call right. or your fighting style, all that kind of stuff comes in, right? Um, and so that, so you want to be thinking about that and figuring out which of those that you would choose, because we're going to probably do that uh, really close to the beginning of the session next time. So that okay. by the time you're leaving Traston Finn and you're on your way to another island, you will be third level. So okay. you might as well level up your character, even though we're technically not there. I'm, I'm trying to be a little flexible with how that works. Uh, okay. You know, we're, we're establishing so much right now that uh you know there's there's not a ton of combat there's a lot of role playing you guys are doing really really well um but i haven't provided a lot of opportunities for you to sort of be throwing in uh, you know inspiration points around and doing kind of fancy stuff um that's that's going to start to happen once you leave the sort of main island here so so you might as well just go ahead and, and level up to third level and send me your character information once you've done that okay um, and uh, and then that way we'll We'll just deal with that in that way. It's that's not a big deal. Okay. Um, and then leveling up was gonna it's gonna slow down, right? Like I know now it seems like okay, well every <laughs> leveling up that's that's gonna slow way down, right? Yeah. Uh, the first two levels are are pretty quick, and then now at third level you're gonna sit at third level for a little while. Um, and are we even keeping track of experience points? Or are we just are you just making the call when enough adventuring has gone by? That I, I'm it's time keeping to... track of experience points. I'm not okay. actually, I haven't actually told you the numbers, but I, I do keep track. Um, there's also I, I sort of do a hybrid of raw experience points and milestones um, because really what I do is I I take uh, story points that would probably be considered a milestone and instead of just saying well once you hit this milestone you level up I say well that milestone is worth a certain amount of xp and then I add that to your other sort of x you know whatever the xp is that you're actually technically earning for the different parts of of the game and then so in that way it's kind of a hybrid milestone uh and then pure xp calculation um yeah so because some people just say well we, as soon as we hit this point now you're at this level and for me, I, you know, I, I, I played a long time ago when, you know, even when, uh, when gold, getting, getting gold would get you XP, right? So however much gold you got, one gold piece was worth one experience point. So it actually, uh, it made it so that when you, you would go out and look for treasure and you don't even necessarily want to fight that creature because that big ogre might only be worth 50 experience points. Well, if you, it, it could kill you, number one, really easily, but if you take that 50 experience and then you separate, you know, you divide it by the five PCs, that's only, you know, 10, 10 experience per PC. That's nothing. But if you could sneak around the ogre and get into his lair and steal his 12,000 gold pieces, divide that by five, and that's a lot more XP. So there's a, there's a sort of impetus to not fight. There's more of an impetus to, to sort of mm -hmm. uh, get around fighting by using smarts and using you know terrain and, and using your brains to sort of trick creatures rather than have to directly fight them not to say that we won't directly fight things we for sure will but because i sort of that was what how i cut my teeth in D D was that that sort of game where it was xp for gold um that has informed a lot of how i do things even in modern systems because i feel like there has to be a way to sort of measure how, how much a social interaction is worth and how much a non-combat, any other non-combat interaction is worth. And so I kind of meld those and I have my own little system and uh, there's kind of a calculation and it's, you know, it's not proprietary or anything. It's just one of those, uh, part of it's an, it's more of an art than a, than a science, right? Like part of it is calculation, but part of it is the feel of it. Um, and during the first and second levels, it's so, it's such a low amount. It's really hard to sort of measure that in a way that is meaningful 
it's more important in those lower levels, to me anyway, for you to sort of start establishing your character and, and creating who you are and what your character is going to do and what their motivations are and who they're going to be. Um, you guys have been doing that really well. You know, it, we, we can see this tension between Axley and Ash because Axley is this sort of prankster kind of person, but yet then instead of just, you know, kind of ripping off the fisherman for his boat, he did the illusion to make it seem like, you know, uh, the fisherman won. So there's this kind of weird, it is very chaotic, <laughs> which is good. I like that. So, because you're developing your character. Um, I don't know how well that's going to play out when, <laughs> when Ash really does need you to, to do something and have something go his way. Uh, we'll see how that works. Um, but just don't call him a coward. And I think he might be okay. <laughs> Uh, but I, I think there's a little bit of a respect you're going to have to earn from him because um, I think he feels like you undercut him a little bit. So uh, as a DM, I love that kind of thing because I, I pay attention to that and I notice that. And then as that plays out, you know, this is the sort of dramatic kind of thing that makes different interactions meaningful, right? Like if nobody really cared about their character interaction with each other, then who cares what your interactions are? Yeah. There's yeah, no stakes. I'm not going to care either, and I'm not going to care, right? But since you're sort of putting different things in, you know, there it becomes more impactful, and that's that's really good. I like that. So, you guys are all doing a good job of that. Awesome. And it's nice that we don't have to worry about the administration of the experience points. Then we don't have to do all that accounting, and you're handling it. So I like that. Agree. Yeah. Yeah, I'll handle, I mean, I, and after third level, I'll start telling you, oh, you guys got this much experience this session. I'll actually tell you, I'll send it through Discord. I won't do it like on the air or whatever, but I'll, I'll, I will tell you, and that way you can start keeping track. That way you know how close you are so that you know sort of you have objectives that you can fulfill to, to you know, you're like, if you're 500 experience points away, you're like, you're, you're going to know, okay, we're going to level up soon. You know, and you can start making decisions based on those things rather than just wondering, well, when I, gee, I wonder when we're going to level up. So it's important for you to know it's just, you know, in the first couple of levels, it's not that imperative. So, Great. Okay. Perfect. What else? Any, any thoughts about, about the game? Things that you feel like you have a question about that you don't feel like I've answered or anything like that? Nope. Yeah, no, I don't have any lingering questions. If they are, it's just things we haven't addressed directly or asked sure. or haven't had the chance yet to investigate or ask. Okay. Yeah, I think there's nothing really on my mind besides like the general stuff we haven't figured out yet. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Is I mean, there, I don't think character-wise, we've explored or shared with each other our motivations for why we would want to go forward to adventure. Like, I, we don't know anything, I don't think, about Emeryn's mother, right? So no, that's right. probably right. something that right. will need to come to light. Yeah, so that's actually one of the other things I was going to ask you is, uh, you know, I asked you how you met, and I asked you what was the last item that you worked together on, or the last fight that you were in where you worked together the question I didn't ask, though, is how long have you actually known each other? I know. I was kind of wondering that myself. I would guess just long enough to be uh, obviously acquainted with each other, but not long enough for us to, like, pour out, like, why we're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe so weeks, a couple weeks. Okay. I was thinking more like a month to five weeks. Okay. I was thinking about two, two months. Two months, okay. So again, on the shorter side, but not like. Not like long friends, yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, that sounds right. Cause, I, I, cause the way we're interacting too is like, cause we all have gotten together in a short, time frame also as players we're still learning a lot about the character's abilities it's because it's not like we know each other inside and out where we can say to the other character hey why don't you cast this right now to do this to help us out mm -hmm. we don't know that about each other yeah also the other thing is you actually and Emeryn actually met before so it's possible you have known each other for two months yeah but maybe actually what has been watching 
Ash in the tavern for a couple weeks and then introduced himself, right? So maybe you all have technically only known Ash for a month. You two have known each other for two months, right? Which actually yeah. satisfies everybody's kind of thoughts, right? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Matt? Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. All right. Well, I think uh, this is a good place to stop. Our next session will be on June 9th. We have a, a week or so break here, two week break almost. Um, and so uh, for all of those still sort of listening, paying attention, thank you so much for watching and we hope you enjoyed it. And I'm certainly enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying the players. I'm enjoying you guys, how you're playing your characters. It's really fun for me. And I hope you're enjoying it too. And I look forward to our next session. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. All right, see you guys soon. Oh yeah. So, uh, anybody have a Twitter account? I know Matt does. Uh, you can find me at plus one longsword, and I have a blog by the same name on Blogspot. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I'm Nbays on Twitter. Um, follow me if you want. Excellent. Dave, still no Twitter account? <laughs> <laughs> no Twitter. <laughs> All right. I am DM Samuel on Twitter, and you can see me online at rpgmusings.com. You can also catch me on the Tome Show podcast. Uh, and otherwise, I think that pulls us out. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Thank you.